Just mic'd up with Mikey Matuk. Got the boys in. I got Lloyd. We got Jay Mish. We got Jackie Boy. He tried to jump up, and he might have knocked it in. Good time. Let's go. What a start to the Monday. Oh, no. Liar! I mean, I'm from Lafayette. My boys would come in and say, oh, my Oh, God. So I'm, me and Joe on the ground, I got Joe in the headlock. And he's sitting there, Helmet. he's punching me in the stomach, like steady punching me, punching me, punching me. Here, and he's, everyone sitting around, who here thinks Ochinko can practice today after having five full beers? And he goes, Chad Jones, right? Chad's doing the team. <laughs> Six for, minutes. For seven minutes, right? <laughs> Chad's like, no, nah, man. I, I, I don't think I'm too good to practice today. And I was like, I look back, I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. I fucking saw you there. You were more fucked up than me. Be on the spirit plane had some issues, I think. She was sleep, sleep farting. You heard her or you just thought it was her? I, I sat right next to her and I smelled it. Whoa. What was that? Time to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Three, I'm late. Like I don't even know what I'd be doing. <laughs> now, when you do go to spring training, are you gonna bring your chinchilla and your turtle? <laughs> My dad tell you about it. The SEC is God. They hate fat people. <laughs> I mean, I get crushed for that. You know what I mean? And it's like, come on, man. Hey, it's, it's just the South, bro. You got a bunch of food down here. Yeah, like they, they they're just, all they're better just than them. <laughs> Players, look at Lloyd. <laughs> you know what, Lloyd? <laughs> I mean, you're looking for a recruiting coordinator, coach. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I'll piss my pants right now. We're wearing, <laughs> no way. We're wearing gray pants, long gray pants. He goes, I'll piss my pants right now. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Mic'd Up. Today is Monday, June 12th. We are going to start our show by talking about the NBA Finals. I'm just joking. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Uh, we got a monster show for everybody listening. If it's the first time tuning in, welcome to our show. Uh, welcome to the shenanigans that is mic'd up. Uh, if you're not familiar with the squad that is in here right now, I am Mikey, obviously. This is Jay Mitch. This is Jackie Boy. And this is Lloyd, a.k.a. Floyd, Floyd. a.k.a. whatever you want to call him. Whatever. Um, Happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. Happy that you are here. Uh, monster, monster, monster show today. You have, We have... Jay Johnson coming on at 6.15 via video call. It is Jay Johnson Mondays because if you hadn't heard or really paid attention, LSU is going to be uh, in middle America come Wednesday, which is our other day that we have our show. And Jay Johnson will not be available for that day, but he is coming on today because he enjoys our show. And, and we enjoy having the wheels him. a little bit. Not only do we have Jay coming on at 6.15, at 7.15, sitting in these two chairs, is going to be Paul Skeens, who is going to be potentially the number one overall pick in the draft, probably going to be in the big leagues by September this year, and Thatcher Hurd. Thatcher Hurd also is probably going to be a first-round pick next year, probably going to be in the big leagues at some point in his career relatively soon. Uh, we are very excited. We've had them on our show before when they both committed and decided to transfer to LSU. Um, but now they have finished their season here and have put the Tigers in Omaha. Or they are both big reasons why they are in Omaha. So now we get to chat about expectations, chat about 
hey, is everything, did it live up to everything that you were hoping for? And I'd imagine that it has to them. Um, but I'm very, very excited to have these conversations. Uh, the Heineken headlines are full, obviously, LSU baseball, full of college baseball. Uh, college baseball was the big winners over the weekend. Uh, if you look at all eight, um, or all 16, or I guess there's only eight matchups, right? So eight, eight super regional sites. Every super regional based off of like their attendance, like the capacity of stadiums and actual attendance was up. LSU was up by 25% over their, their uh, I guess, actual seating. Their actual attendance was up. Every other series was also up except for Stanford. Stanford was actually down. They could seat 4,000 and they were not filling up their stadium. They are now playing now. It goes to show you how popular college baseball is around the country except for the West Coast. Um, except for California. Let's, let's say California. There's a lot of things to do over there. Um, but I think the big winner this weekend was California. I mean California, not California. The big weekend this weekend, the big winners this weekend was college baseball. Was Alex Box Stadium because it was electric all weekend. The fans weathered the storm, so to speak. And stayed there and came out in droves and they had they put out all their it was the best I've seen Alex Box Stadium in a, in a very, very, very long time. LSU obviously sweeps the series against Kentucky, makes their way into Omaha. Um, there are six out of the eight spots in Omaha have, have been filled. The other two are gonna be either Southern Miss and Tennessee or Tennessee, who the winner of that series plays LSU first game in Omaha, or and um Texas and Stanford, they both play game three tonight. The winner of that series, it will be um, in Omaha as well. It will be the eighth and final team because they're on the West Coast and they are playing after, I believe. They're playing a late-night game. I'm not sure exactly yeah, the time. They, the they start game. at seven, I think. But there is a weather delay in the other game. So. There we go. There we go. So we will keep you updated with that um, as we go. I believe LSU played – the most complete weekend of baseball they have played in a very, very, very long time. Um, I feel like you can argue that about the last two weeks. I agree. 100% agree. People were worried about what's going to happen with the bullpen. People didn't think we were going to get out of our regional. People didn't think that we were going to make it to Omaha. People thought that our bullpen was going to fail us. They didn't think that the offense could hit with runners in scoring position. I think that they have a, the team, without saying it uh, with words and saying it with their actions, said shut up. Watch, sit back, watch, let us do our thing, and let us prove to you that we are the team that you thought we were. We are who we thought we were, right? Um, Paul Skeens did what Paul Skeens does. He dominated. He looked amazing. He got a well-deserved standing ovation in game one. LSU drove guys in with runners in the scoring position. They hit a bunch of homers. They did everything they needed to do. Got off to a great start. 14-0. I think was the final. Yep. Right? 14 nothing on the Saturday game after an all day Affair. weather delay. Two right? possession ball game. Yeah. Two possession. That was a great. <laughs> yeah. Great by Tom. Was it Tom Hart? Tom Hart said that. Was it Tom? No, no. Who was, was it? Somebody said something about two It was either Tom Hart, Dave Neal, whoever was calling the game with Ben. They said, uh, we're going to go to commercial LSU with a two touchdown lead. And I was like, that is a great way to put it. Because it was two touchdown lead. Um, and then game and then game two on Sunday. Ty Floyd starts, battled his way through three innings. Didn't look sharp, but figured out a way to limit the damage. And Jay, being the guy, the, the coach and the manager of the team and, and knowing his personality and knowing his personnel, after Ty gave up the leadoff, or not maybe not the leadoff, uh, gave up the, the guy, once Ty gave up the base runner, got the base runner on the fourth inning, he, had not, he said that it was – Time for him to come out. He brings in Riley Cooper, Mr. Dependable, and he comes in there and gives you three shutout innings and pitches extremely well and, and bridges the gap to Gavin Gidry. Gavin Gidry comes in there, kind of pitches himself into some trouble, pitches himself out of trouble, and he continues to stay in there. Stays in there in the eighth, stays in there in the ninth, all while Thatcher's warming up in the bullpen. We thought that he was going to come in. I said it on this show that I believe that he was going to pitch in that Saturday, in that second game, if the game was, if they had the ability to win the game and just end the series. I obviously was wrong. He was getting hot. He was definitely hot. He threw a whole game in the bullpen, I feel like. Um, but 
He was not needed. Gavin Guidry shut the door. And Dylan Cruz did what superstars do in his last home at bat as an LSU Tiger. Hits a two-run game-sealing double and showed more emotion than anybody has ever seen from him as in his career here at LSU. Last weekend, he hit the homer, showed some emotion. This weekend, hits the double, gets the second base. It was absolutely berserk. I was getting goosebumps because we, me and Jared, have been in that situation. And that emotion that he showed is real, authentic, and it is very much deserved. Like, you need to show that. And the fact that he did it, he was doing the, the he was highlighting the LSU, the Tigers. He did the heart. Like, everything that he did he ran through him. was unbelievable, right? Next, bot, next guy was Tommy White. He lines out to third base. What does he do after he comes into the dugout? Pumps up the crowd as he's coming in. My whole point in saying this is these guys are built, were built. They understood what was – they understood their goal, right? Nobody got above the team. Nobody felt like they were better than the team. Everybody kind of had one collective goal and one collective mission, and it was to get to Omaha, and they did that. That's why Tommy White came here. That's why Paul Skeens came here. That's why Thatcher Hurd came here. That's why all these guys transferred in was to go to Omaha. That's why Dylan Cruz came here as a uh, high schooler was to go to Omaha. They finally got there. You saw the emotion. After the game, you can see Tommy White going absolutely nuts on the field, giving big hugs, like breaking people's hands with high fives. It was just, it was pandemonium, and it was very well-deserved, and it was a very well-played game, and it was extremely, extremely fun to watch. Now, they're in Omaha now. They are, you know, anything can happen in the College World Series. Are they perfect? Have they played perfect? No. But they played extremely, extremely well this weekend, and we are going to talk about all of that. Jay is coming on the show here in about five minutes. Before Jay gets on here and we have our, our conversation with him, I just want to go around the room, you know, because we were all we were all there for the whole weekend. What did you see? What did you feel? What did you like? What did you not like about this weekend, Jay? Um, well, you outside of it being super hot, you touched on everything. I, I don't think there's much left to be said. <laughs> but uh, nah, dude. I mean, like you said, it was a great weekend. They played some very complete baseball. For the last two weeks, I think you're finally getting a chance to see. I don't. People don't understand. Like when they went through the struggle of the month of not pitching well and quote unquote not getting it done on the mound or doing what people thought they would be doing. I personally think that had a lot to do with young guys one finding their way and two having to be overextended for what they were not ready for yet. Is that a talent thing? Hell no, it's not. But sometimes it takes time for people to understand, one, understand exactly what they're being asked to do, two, to be comfortable with being, with executing what you're being asked to do, and then actually going out and doing it, you know? And I think that took these guys a little bit of time, and then now that guys that maybe were not performing what we thought they were gonna perform or that are getting to spots that are helping them out, it's shortening the time for some of these guys out of the pen and they don't have to go out there and do extra. You know, they're actually able to go out there and be themselves right now. And I think it's helping them out, you know. We, we talked about it at the beginning of the year. If they wanted to be where they wanted to be at the end of the year, certain guys are going to have to play a certain way. Over the past month, those certain guys have started to step up. And, and some guys looks, that you may not expect are going to have to do things. And it looks completely different. When, when we talk about certain guys that you didn't expect to be doing stuff, Gavin Guidry didn't pick up a ball and didn't step on the mound all fall. Cabeloso and that guy is the lineup. absolute fireman. Cabeloso was supposed to be the oh man, he's a fifth year feel good guy. He has literally been an anchor in the lineup Three all run year. Three-run homer yesterday. All year, all year he's been an anchor. So that's that's what putting a team together. And I think you couldn't have said it any better way when you watch. If you if you're wondering what a team that has potentially the number one and number two overall draft picks is about, if you're wondering what they're about. Watching Dylan at the end of the game, whether you like it, whether you don't, whether you think it's it's, I don't know whether you think it's um, fake, fake, wh- wh- however you want to call it, like that right there shows you a guy that I guarantee you he understands where he's at in his career, but he's got one goal in mind right now, and that means a lot. And that if if you can get the leaders 
or leaders to 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 do stuff like that, then that's when you get kind of guys to follow suit and understand what's going on. So it was cool to watch all that, man. I mean, if you go and look at the games, right, just in your head, if you go and kind of recap the games and recap some of these things that happen, like, and look, the first game was great. It was an all-around dominant performance, 14 nothing. The game was never out of hand. It was never closed. Paul Skeens had complete control of it. It felt like Kentucky was like, you know what? You're not going to let you strike us out. So we are going to put the ball in play. Well, you know what that did? That made him go through four innings with 40 pitches thrown. And they're like, okay, maybe we need to regroup and change our strategy. <laughs> change strategy. And maybe try to work the count a little bit more. And now he's, then he started striking some guys out. Ended up getting coming out with in seven, he had through seven and two thirds. I think he only had like 101 pitches. He obviously had more in the tank. He didn't need to be out there. Jay took him out mid-inning so that he got the curtain call that he deserved, and uh, he dominated, right? So that first game, they did what they needed to do. The second game, Kentucky tried to do everything in their power to slow the game down, to get them out of rhythm, to take the momentum away, more mound visits, more conversations with the umpire for no reason, seemingly, uh, more pitching changes, more all this other stuff just to slow it down to be able to say, you know what, we're not going to let them keep this momentum because LSU had scored, I think it was, they were up 5-3. 6-3. It was 5-3. Like, five, 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 three. Three. Five, three. Well, before three. that, I think yeah. it was 5-1 five to one and 5-2, to two, and they kind of had control, and all of a sudden, you know, some of that momentum went away, and it got that Kentucky started throwing up a couple zeros. They had a couple. They had some three solo home runs, I believe, and made it five to three. Right, so the game was kind of in hand, or uh, was kind of tight. It was not. It was not in hand. It was a pretty it close plugs. game, and you saw. You started to see some people throughout the course of this game make extraordinary plays and have some extraordinary moments. Right, Cade Beloso, fifth year senior. Wasn't going to come back. Came back to school this year because he wanted to be to Omaha. And he wanted to win a national championship. He hits a three-run home run. Thompson maligned last year. People thought he, you know, he was banged up. People didn't think he was good. Makes maybe the play, defensive play of the year in the hole. And I don't think... It's been a long time since I've seen someone... He made it look so play. easy that I don't think people realize how hard it was. Not only did he make it, he threw that thing from the side. Just flipped it over there. No oh, bounce in the air. Great play by Trey at first for the stretch. It's just these guys make – they made extraordinary plays in moments where you needed them to, and that's the championship team, right? That's the team that they were built for, and that's what they were trained to do all year. That's what they believe that they can do all year. We're going to talk more about this uh, with the guy who put this team together, with the guy who's kind of guided these guys. Jay Johnson is on the on, in the on-deck circle. We are going to take a 30-second break because I know y'all are here not to hear me, but to hear Jay talk and to hear Paul and Thatcher come in later and talk. So we're going to take a 30-second break, get Jay situated, and we'll be right back to you. You're watching Mic'd Up. Oh, you have the sticker on your head. Well, that's going to be brought to you by FCO. There you go. Every Who's FCO? FCO. There we go. FCO Development. FCO Development is a civil construction company based out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, they... they or they specialize in math it. went bye bye to me long ago, so huh? I never had a chance to work there. Like what? math, what you know, engineering and all that such. So you know, the smarter people. Well, have... this is so civil engineering. Let me explain to you how this works. The civil engineering is more about the earthwork and the ground, and you prep the land before you build vertically. And I don't know how much uh, mathematics that they are actually doing. Got you. Maybe Jay can tell. In that in that spot. Well, so I don't well, think the math excuse to you is a, is a thing, but. Let's go to development, our friends. That's why you have the sticker on your forehead. I, I'm sure your friend, Tyler Day. Welcome back to Mike Up. As we led the show off, obviously LSU is going to Omaha. They have swept through the postseason so far, swept through the regional, swept through the super regional. Um, as we do every week, Coach Jay Johnson 
graces us with his presence. We are honored and we are excited to always have him on the show. It is Jay Johnson Monday. Uh, I believe that he should be excited. We are very excited to talk to him. Uh, Coach, I appreciate... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Boy, whoa. Geez. Sorry about that, Coach, boys. I appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, congratulations on your first Super Regional at the box, your first Super Regional win at the box. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that, that lived up to the hype. Our fans delivered in a big time, big time way. That is that is a home field advantage if I've ever seen one. Coach, and, look, uh, really. I've been here a long time. Can you hear me? Sorry. I can hear you. All right. I've been I've been an LSU fan my whole life. I watched them growing up at the old box. I got to play here. That week this weekend may have been the best I've seen Alex Box Stadium and maybe ever. I mean, this is something you, you didn't get to experience the Super Regional at home last year um, or the Regional at home last year. You got to experience this year. Did it live up to the hype? Did it live up to the expectations or did it surpass it? You know, I think it surpassed it in two ways. I think the, the two moments that you really felt it were uh, before game one, yeah. after the long day, and starting at 9.06 p.m., when our team took the field, like, I got some chills going up my spine. I was like, man, I hope Paul can just keep it together in this first <laughs> inning. Not try to overdo it. And then, uh, you know, when Dylan doubled last night in the ninth inning, you know, that was what was like, okay, it's this is happening. And these people know it's happening. And um, pretty awesome. And uh, big time, like I said, big time shout out to the fans. They were unbelievable this, this postseason. And then all the things that are going on during the game, and you're speaking about the atmosphere right now. But like you said, after a long day, a lot of weather delay on Saturday night, the mid-game interview, you're able to <laughs> speak about and kind of plug the recruiting pit a uh, bit of it a bit. Is that something that just kind of came over you right then and there because of how ridiculous it is here? Or like, how did that go? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't even know. I was just like being me and like doing what I do. <laughs> like, I mean. I, like I've so many people have asked me about that, and I was just like, I'm not a rocket scientist, but just like look around. Like we're, we're hitting homers. We got a dude throwing 102. I mean, Will Helmers is the best hype man ever in the dugout. I mean, <laughs> fans are going crazy. They're booing the umpire. Standing ovation for our guys making hustle plays. Like, come on, it's it's not that hard. Like, it, it, purple's a good color. Like, let's let's go. Let's get it moving. <laughs> So the game was scheduled for 2 o'clock, obviously, on Saturday. You had some rain, potentially rain, ended up not raining. It's Louisiana weather. It happens. I, to me, it was a blessing in disguise because I think that Paul Skeens in his last home start at LSU deserved a night game. And so I'm glad that it was able to get, like, this regional, super regional feel at night under the lights for him. And, boy, did he deliver. I mean, he was sitting 100 to 103 for three straight innings. Um, and I know we talk about him a lot, and I know you kind of run out of things to say about him, but just speak on how important he has been to you, the team, his leadership, him coming in here and just embracing the atmosphere and embracing the tradition of LSU. Yeah, we could talk all night, and the best part is he's he's not done. You know, right. we hopefully got him for two or three more times, um, and uh, super – special guy i mean the talent is ridiculous i mean he's a front of line number one starter in the major leagues future cy young winner future all-star uh, and what he's delivered from a production standpoint you can't even quantify that but then you just make the character the leadership the team first attitude and the impact or the positive impact he's made on everybody in the locker room it's like it, it doesn't even feel like a real human being. It's so big, you know, because they just they're not out there like Paul. And uh, what a performance! I mean, I'll just I'll stand by and I'll say Saturday night's game was his best game of the year. Yeah. And you think about the situation, the magnitude, and how good he's been. That tells you everything. Coach, you, you talked about the locker room and his impression on the locker room and how what he's meant to the team in that in that aspect. I want to talk a little about some other guys who I feel like coming into the year, it felt like that was going to be their role. They're going to be the locker room guys. They're going to be off the bench. They're going to be the guys who have had the experience and they're veteran guys. They love LSU. And then all of a sudden they get thrusted into these roles and they come up huge 
throughout the course of the weekend. Obviously, if you told, if I told you, hey, Kay Beloso is going to be in the lineup every day hitting 330 with 14 pumps, you'd be like, yeah, I'll take that every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Hayden Trevinci is going to be hitting 400 with 10 home runs. You're going to have these guys coming up in situations and making these enormous plays. Can you speak to how important that has been, not only to the team, but to those guys as, as people and, and credit to them for, for sticking it out? Yeah, I actually would tell you, like, I'm probably the least surprised by it. And I know that may sound maybe a little front runnerish, you know, now that they're, they're doing well. But, you know, when Kate got hurt last year, right before the first game, like, that really hurt our team last year. I mean, he was in the lineup batting fifth opening night, and then he got hurt and was out for the season. Well, he was batting fifth, you know, yeah. last night and for the past 25, 30 games. And he just takes such a good at bat. You can see it coming. The work has all really paid off for him. And then with Hayden, the talent has never been the question. And he just has struggled with injuries, too, the whole time that we've been here. And he just kind of the same thing. He, he put the team first. He took the role that he had, embraced it. And then he just kept working. And I know it may sound strange, but his fourth year here, his second with us, you can kind of see he was improving while he was waiting to get his opportunity. And he's a super confident guy. And once he got in there, I mean, that really changed us as a team. So um, I'm not surprised at all. But those two guys have shown the way for everybody of how to handle things professionally and put the team first, place the needs of the team above your own, be mature, keep working, be prepared when your opportunity comes, and then go execute. I mean, they're, they're the model for that. Uh, Coach, now I mean no pun by when I say this, but as the season rounds into shape, can you speak a little bit about a guy that you were able to bring with you from Arizona who over the last two weeks, if you ask me, has been as big as you could possibly be, and it is so obvious your level of trust that you have in him and the two situations that you give the ball to him. Can you talk a little bit about Riley Cooper and how well he's been and what he's meant to the team and what he's doing for you right now? Absolute winner, period. I mean, that's that's all that really needs to be said. Uh, does not get enough credit. I don't think you could get past one hand and, and count across the entire country pitchers that have multiple super regional wins under their belt, you know, in terms of pitching decisions. He now has two. Um, he's going to Omaha for the second time. We wouldn't be going there without him. You know, last Sun Monday, uh, third game of the regional, it wasn't really a hard decision of who we were going to go with in that game. I felt really good about the way he threw the ball in Hoover. I thought he matched up well with Oregon State. Got us off to a great start, let our offense do its thing. And then last night, I mean, to to hold the game at 5-3 for three innings yeah. yep. and gave us everything that he had. And and I'll, I'll say this, I think last night is the best I've ever seen him just execute pitches. And Kentucky scored some runs on us in the series here in April. It just, they were not seeing him. They were not getting good swings. Um, I mean, he was up in the zone with a fastball, spinning the breaking ball, changeup was elite, bent a couple times with a hit here, a walk there, but then the next guy was out and then uh, gave us exactly what we needed. I want to say he got nine outs for us in, in yeah. three innings. Yep. And uh, just trust him. I mean, he's a winner and I trust him. Because you talk, he, he comes in after Ty. Ty's been your number two guy all year. He's been really good all year. Um, he battled his way through those three innings, right? He, he had some trouble in the first. He ended up limiting the damage and getting out of that inning. Gave up a couple solo homers. That's just he's a fly ball pitcher. Some guys ran into some balls, and they, and they got out. That just happens. I feel like in Omaha, the field's a little bit bigger. The ball doesn't carry as much. Maybe those balls don't really carry out. But he battled through it, right? A sign of a championship team is picking up the other guy. And Riley Cooper did that to him. I feel like you're going to be folk you're, He's going to be confident. Next time he goes out, you're going to be confident in him. Talk about the way he was able to battle, keep the game uh, in a position where you all are still have the lead and able for, uh, for Riley Cooper to be able to, to take you into Gavin Guidry and get the win. Yeah, I just, I'm so proud of all those guys. You know, starting with Ty, I, I said this last night in the post game. Somebody was asking me about Ty, and they were just like, 
what what do you think? What's the deal? It's like, well, he's had a great season. Yeah. Just nobody talks about it because Paul's been on another planet. Right. And you kind of lose sight of that. But think of, let's go backwards. I mean, he did what his job as a starting pitcher. He gave us a chance to win last night. He had one run in three innings before we got the lightning delay against Oregon State. That was off to a good start, okay? Um, SEC tournament, he pitched great against Texas A&M. If it wasn't the situation where it wasn't the SEC tournament and the NCAA tournament wasn't around the corner, I never would have taken him out of that game. Right. And we probably would have won, to be honest with you. Right. And then you go backwards, he had a phenomenal outing uh, at Georgia. He had a great outing against Mississippi State. And then the week before against Auburn, like he had the little hiccup in that game. But, I mean, he struck out like seven or eight guys in a row. Right. So I mean, it's about as solid as you get. And it's been a big offensive year in college baseball. I, I take my chances with him all day, every day. And it's a big reason I felt like we would be able to close it out last night. So he got us off to a great start. As I said, Riley came in and did awesome. And, and Gidry was an assassin, which yeah. was beautiful. Hey, I'm gonna strike as them all he, out. As he I'm is, gonna strike them all out. I was kind of, I kind, I was kind of surprised that you, <laughs> you brought him in when you did. And with that being the case, obviously Thatcher was in the pen and threw a lot in the pen. How close were you to actually bringing him in last night? Thatcher, yeah, yeah. So the longer we could hold with Gavin, the better it was going to make our decision mm -hmm. because you have to account for everything and to get to Omaha, you have to win two out of three. So it's a two run lead at home. The fans are going bonkers. Like, I mean, it's first and goal in the five yard line We're going for this. thing. But with that being said, I'm the one person in the park that has to have like a little bit of self-control of like, okay, what if something goes sideways? We have to be set up for tomorrow. So to still have Thatcher, Nate Ackenhausen, Javen Coleman, and I'm even forgetting somebody else right now, but like I felt like we were set. Then it was like, okay, let's see how the top of the ninth goes. And it was an awesome top of the ninth, you know, scoring three runs right there. So it afforded us the ability to send Gavin back out, and they weren't seeing him or getting good swings on him. And sometimes that supersedes any thought matchup thing. It's like, what's happening right now? Like this dude is locked in. And they are not getting swings off of him. So it was a good decision itself to just let him roll anyways. But if we got into a situation where it was dicey, we would have gone to Nate Ackenhausen or Thatcher uh, to finish it last night if we needed to. But because we scored those three runs, it's like, okay, now let's let's do this the right way and just make sure we're, we're covered for, for the next day if we needed to be. So you, you come on here and you talked about, you know, Mengione, you and him are, are tight. You are good friends. Uh, was there some gamesmanship going on on his side after some of those reviews and then all the conversations with the umpires after the reviews and you came out and you said, what the heck is going on? Get out of here. Like, why is he stalling this game on? Like, I know we're boys, but let's go. Yeah. Let's figure this thing out. Yeah, I mean, he first off, he did a phenomenal job with that team this year. I mean, I don't know who won. I don't even know who won SEC Coach of the Year, but I don't think anybody did a better job of coaching their team. I mean, to, them to be in a super regional and execute – all of those types of things was uh, was awesome for him. But there's a specific rule after a delay. You can't go back out and talk and argue. It's like, wait a minute. The, the, the review went in their favor. Like, what the <laughs> So I just went out there guns blazing. I'm like, hey, man, you can't do that. That's exactly what he was doing. We got a guy just carving him up out there, and he's trying to yeah. break his rhythm. And we've seen that before this year. I was like, let's get this game started, man. I want to – I don't want to play on Monday. I want to get this thing over with and celebrate tonight and get ready for Omaha. He so. tried it. He tried his hardest. Like I know he's trying to everything he can do to win, but that may have been the most pitching changes in one inning that I've ever seen in my entire life. And it was always mid count. I thought he was going to bring in the righty in for Dylan before the start of the at bat, and he left the lefty in. Gets pass ball, pass ball, run score, two one count. Bring the righty in, and the double obviously. But um, I felt like it was a little bit of gamesmanship going on, like you said, to just kind of. Kind of kill the momentum a little. Yeah, try to. That's a good. That's a good move. We won a game earlier this year yeah. where we did the same exact thing, yeah. and their closer. It was an Ole Miss. Is the game Travinsky hit the home run? Is their closer had to sit down for like thirty five minutes? We made three pitching changes in the bottom of the eighth inning. So that's a good good coaching move. But you know, Gavin Gidry's Gavin Gidry. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> You're not taking him off track, um, Coach. Before we get to something like that, you've had some conversations with Skip, and I, I want to get into that. But before we go to that, I want to talk about one more player. Talked about him a lot. 
Uh, I feel like he ended his career at home. Not ended his career. He's still got a lot, like a, a long way to go. But his last home game at LSU, um, he comes up in a situation to to basically seal the game. Obviously, you had to close it out in the bottom of the ninth. He gets an opportunity to seal it. Crowd's chanting his name. The the PA announcer and the and the guys running the music did an unbelievable job of playing his walkout music as an in-between inning thing, because I know you're not supposed to play it. Unbelievable move by them. He gets the double. He shows more emotion than I've ever seen. It gave me, it got me emotional. It gave me the chills. Um, I, would, I, I can't let you get off the show today without just speaking on that, that moment and him and how special it is to have a superstar like him buy into the team and the tradition and the history and just be a part of everything and not be a, just about himself. Yeah, the absolute standard of player and human being for the rest of time, at least as I'm a coach, it's like there's there's only one Dylan. And it was very interesting situation right there where it was almost like, oh, this is happening right now. Yeah. Like, I already know how this is going to go. And uh, <laughs> they had the open base thing, which gave you like 10% of thought that hey maybe they're maybe just gonna walk him and it's like this is dylan they can't do that right now there's no <laughs> <laughs> the pitcher would not get out of that stadium alive right now <laughs> he threw four balls coach mingione man he would have needed serious security if he intentionally walked him again you know no um, doubt but uh it, it was just one of those things like you i could see it happen before it happened and going like He's going to get one pitch in this at bat, and there's no shot. It's going to be a foul ball or a yeah, swing right, and miss. Right. And uh, he had a bullet, and as only he can. I mean, it's just that special Kobe Bryant, you know, gamer. You know what's going to happen before it happens. And talk about a, a postseason. These five games he's put together have been pretty amazing. Coach, going to Omaha, a big part in my, in my eyes about being in Omaha is the experience of it and – when it's new and it's fresh and no one's done it, it's 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 somewhat distracting. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of new things. Like having a huge super regional at home, you can say it's distracting, but at the same time, you're home. You're in your own bed. You're playing in your own park. Everything. There's a lot of familiar things as well, right? This is, in a way, going on the road, but it's something completely different. But having players, i.e., obviously, O'Reilly Cooper on the team who's been there before, who can speak to guys, who can tell them, hey, look, this is what you're going to see. This is what's going on here. Here it is here. Where all of these things kind of, I guess, get moved into an easier moment for these guys to kind of, how big is that going to be for your team as you guys go there and, you know, try to finish this thing out? I think it's huge. And I went into it today and just had a meeting, no practice, but just a meeting at 1 o'clock is like the, the point of like, hey, you celebrated it last night hang out today and just relax. I want you to basically get all of that out of your system. So we show up tomorrow, we go to work and then we just laid out, this is what the exact week is going to look like um, in terms of what we're doing tomorrow when we're leaving on Wednesday, where we're going to practice on Wednesday, practicing in the stadium on Thursday. Then you get the opening ceremonies where we're practicing on Friday and what time leading into probably playing on Saturday, like taking all the guesswork out of it. But this team has done a really good job of knowing who they need to be, where they need to be that, and when they need to be it. And so this is like the the ultimate test of that. But I just I trust them so much in their maturity of having that off switch when, you know, hey, man, you deserve to have a steak dinner on Wednesday night and just hang out and laugh and feel great about being there. And then when you're taking the team picture by the statue, like, that's awesome. That's fun the few hours or a couple hours we're on the field for practice, like let's get locked in at what's made us great and preparing well. And, and they, they know that, Hey, they've put in the bar in the last two weeks to get ready to play on the weekend. And that's materialized or manifested itself into great play. And they're hyper motivated to do that. So I think we addressed it. And then, you know, addressing the specific things that you need to do, you know, relative to playing there to do well, we briefly talked about those things. We'll go to work on them all week and, Let's go. Let's let's do it. Coach, you've been to Omaha before. You've made deep runs in Omaha. You've you've been in a national championship game. 
So it's not new to you to be there. And obviously all of those seasons were special in their own way out there in Arizona. But you come here to LSU to play in the best conference in the country and to compete against the best teams in the country for the best school in the country. LSU hasn't been to Omaha since 2017 when they were you know, a couple plays away from maybe winning their seventh national championship. You came here for this very reason. Can you speak to how special it is for you um, and what it's meant for you to be able to, in year two, guide these guys and put these guys in a position to fulfill their dreams of, of winning a College World Series and, and getting to Omaha for LSU in particular? Yeah, I mean, I appreciate that question too, but like, I just view this differently. Like, somebody asked me last night if I was like relieved, you know right, what I mean? Right, like, right. okay, we're going to Omaha. And I was like, you know, not really, but then I thought about it a little bit more today. And I would actually say yes, but the reason is different than people think. Like, Dylan Cruz had to play in Omaha. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Gavin Dugas and Cade Beloso had to play in Omaha. Trey Morgan had to play in Omaha. Ty Floyd needed to pitch in Omaha. And when I came here, I'll be very frank. I mean, I definitely had the 2023 season on my mind. Like everything decision we made last year, we were and we were going for it in 2022. Don't get me wrong, and, and had a darn good season. But you know, I really felt strongly like we could put all of the pieces in place from like a structure, a culture, a buy-in standpoint. You know, put get the personnel in the right spot, and you know, add in obviously Paul, Tommy. Thatcher, you know, those guys are massive, massive contributors and put ourselves in a position where we could compete to go do something like this, like host a regional, host a super regional, uh, be ready to execute at that time and then go to Oman and have a chance to win. So, I mean, honestly, like it's all great from my standpoint, um, you know, and, and I'm proud to, to coach our team in Omaha and I'm proud and happy for LSU. But I mean, last night, I mean, I was just kind of driving home you know, windows down at 1230 and, you know, music going. And, and really all I thought about was like, you know, Cade Beloso and Gavin and Hayden and those guys smiling after the game. And like, for me, that's, that's as good as it gets. Coach, part of, part of what makes LSU and has made LSU such a desirable place to play and coach and create this tra tradition. You spoke, you, you spoke about this a lot throughout the course of the year. You even, you even acknowledged him during your, your press conference. Um, can you talk about the the, skip, the relationship you have with Skip and the guidance that you have uh, gotten from him and some of the advice that maybe you've leaned on him for and, and um, how great he's made this place? Honestly, how great he's made college baseball, to be honest with you. Yeah, and I think I may have said this to you guys before. Like, the, the, the best part of this job is the personal relationship I've got to develop with him because in in the profession I have the the you always aspire to be the best I mean he is the unquestioned goat you know what I mean like no doubt about that and I studied him as a young coach so now talking to him like three or four times a week and and getting to hear or rehear some of those stories because I have some familiar familiarity with him uh has been amazing and um uh, just to see him sitting there last night and supporting us the way that he does. And I mean, running down on the field and, you know, <laughs> well, not running, not running yeah, but yeah. on the field and, and going, Hey, tanks, come over here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and the only um, way Skip can do it. And the only way he can do it. And so like and last night will be a night I remember forever. And, and he's a big part to do with that. And then and, and same with coach Maneri. Like, I mean, he couldn't have been better as far as helping me get off to a good start here and, and just little things I needed to know about the, the program and the roster and all those types of things. Like getting to spend time with the two guys of that level and caliber of coach here uh, is honestly probably one of the, the, from the personal standpoint, one of the best things about coaching here. Um, coach. Before I let you go, obviously y'all are, are leaving for Omaha, you said on Wednesday. Um, you know, you celebrate this win, you talk about, um, you know, what it means to win this game. You give them a 24 hours or, you know, 36 hours to, to kind of get through it and you get back and uh, you get going. Going into Omaha, do you have uh, 
you know, you've been there before. Is there strategy? Does your strat your strategy as a coach change the way you approach it based off the team, or do you kind of you have this template and you're going to kind of run with that uh, as y'all get there? You know, I think it's it's a blend. And yeah. when I, I say that is like if you don't look at it that way, I feel like you're being short sighted. And I don't ever want to be short sighted. I want to look at how do we execute the best from all angles and then ultimately determine what we do. Now, the great part about baseball that's a little bit different is like, you know, you're not looking at a defense and going, hey, are they running a nickel or a four three or a three four? You know, if they audible, what are we going to it's not like that. So, I mean, it's about controlling the strike zone from the mound. It's about controlling the strike zone from the batter's box. It's about running the bases smart and aggressive, playing fundamental defense. Those things all are exactly the same. Now, you look at it's a bigger stadium. There's more room for hits to drop in. The grass is, is nice, and the infield is perfect, but it's slower. Um, you have to manage the strike zone. You have to play defense. You have to take advantage of the extra base when it presents itself. Um, like we'll, we'll dial in all those yeah. types of things. I think in some ways as may, it may not seem this way because we've hit a lot of home runs, but we actually have a team in, in a lot of facets where you could look at playing there as an advantage for us. And I'm excited about that. And we'll make those kind of maybe small tweaks, but we're going to, we're going to do our deal and roll how we roll. Just before I let you go, I just want to have a little baseball. Just, I want you to just give some baseball knowledge to the people listening. Um, Last year, we've talked about Jordan a lot throughout the course of the year. Last year, he was much maligned, had a, had a battle through some injuries, and people figured, just kind of wrote him off. How hard – can you just explain how hard that play he made was? Like, that, that play he made last night, how hard that was and how easy he made it look? Because I think people are going to overlook it and say, man, this, it was a hard play, but, you know, he kind of made it look easy. And it, it's – that's almost impossible. There's not many people that can make that play. Yeah. Yeah. So in practice, like that play will come up once in a while, just when you're hitting ground balls and stuff like that. And, and it happens. I just always catch myself yelling, cheater, you know, like Derek Jeter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change that right now. Whenever it happens to somebody else again, I'm going to go like, Jordan. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No doubt. No doubt. He's a stud, man. And, and you know, I, he's the man. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't think, again, partly because of Dylan and, you know, Trey and some of these other guys, nobody – talks about how great a player he is. We are not going to Omaha without Jordan Thompson as our shortstop. And, um, you know, the game's hard. And if, if you haven't played it, you don't know it. And um, think about all the big hits he's gotten, yeah. at least yeah. in the last two years. And, I mean, the defense is I – I don't want anybody else playing shortstop for us. I can tell you that. For a second. But, <laughs> Coach, I want to give you a chance because it just came across the wire that – Y'all have a send-off at 9 a.m. at Alex Box. I wanted to give you a chance to promo to some of what may be the best fans in the country. So here's your, your moment to do a little PSA, if you will. Not maybe. Are, are the, the best yes. fans in the country. Wait a minute. Are you talking about the send-off? Yes. Yeah, the send-off at Alex Box at 9 a.m. on Wednesday. So I just wanted to give you a chance to 9 check a.m. out. Yeah. Come on out. High five these guys. <laughs> Lloyd promoted yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, they they uh, they played hard. I mean, I think we ended up with a home record of like thirty three and seven or something like that. And um, in baseball, it's hard to do. It's super hard to do with the schedule that we played. And if you look at all the teams that we played and the postseason success that they've had and are still having, um, you know, th their fans. Like I said at the beginning of this thing, what I'll never forget these five postseason games. And um, they showed up in a big way and. Pack up those RVs, man. Let's go. We're yeah. going to Omaha and, and all that. And heck, I don't care. Like bring them to Alex Box, send the team off, and just let's let's uh, just start driving from I that point that. forward, you know, and um, and be there and, and hang out. And I can't wait. You know, the two times that I've been, LSU hasn't been there when I've been there. And um, so, and, and I'd see fans from LSU even when they weren't playing it. And I was like, wait a minute, I thought they got eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> They're here anyway, so. I, I, I'm pumped to see that that stadium uh, rocking a lot of purple in it. I, I think a lot of them still maybe maybe live there, maybe have a second house there. But I, you said it best just now, and I, I think it's crazy that people – you go through a baseball season, there's so many games, right? And to come to a school like LSU means to get an opportunity to have that five or six games at the end of a season in that stadium. And you speaking on it means volumes for people to see it coming from – Someone they haven't heard it from before for the first time, and then you see it, and you're like, Jesus! All right, this is what you this is what you come here for. 
Yeah, no doubt about it. And for, I mean, as, as a coach, I feel the same exact way. Yeah. And um, that home field advantage thing is, is unreal. And uh, we want to recreate that. Uh, and I keep going to say Ameritrade, but I know it's not Ameritrade anymore. Um, we we want to recreate that thing at uh, Charles Schwab Field uh, yeah, Charles for the next. There you go. Yeah, I thought it was uh, honestly. I, I didn't even know it was named anymore. I didn't think it, I didn't know uh, it coach, it. good luck this week. Safe travels. Believe it or not, you are going to see our pretty faces in Omaha. We are going. I just booked my flight. I am working on, you know, some other logistics. But we'll we're going to be out. there. I'll keep a little <laughs> away from you. Don't worry. But uh, we will be there. Yeah, I'd be super disappointed if you guys weren't going. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, we'll be there. We're gonna be there. Okay, Safe, man. Safe you're travels. asking me to step up my game every week. If you're not going, you guys would have needed to seriously step up your game. You're right. That's a very good point. You got you hold me accountable. We're there. Coach, good, good luck. Safe travels, and uh, we'll see you in Omaha. All right, guys. All thanks. Right. Yep. Safe. I love that man. That was good, huh? Was that, no, it was good. I mean, you think that he was looking forward? I think it was the most looked forward uh, interview. You think that, that he tone had. was a little different than the uh, last? He was three? happy. He couldn't wait to talk to us. He even told you on the field last yeah. night. Oh, it was bu- it was booked already. He said, "Hey, I'm coming on tomorrow." I oh, said, yeah. "Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are coming on tomorrow." Um, he booked the interview. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. Look, I think he knew what to expect. Right? Like you can. People can tell you what it's like here. People can tell you what the expectations are. People can, you know, you can even feel it in a sense. But what they can't tell you is they can't have you experience it. They can't, it's all words, right? It doesn't hit the same until you actually see it for yourself and go through it. Last year, they went through, um, you know, their season last year and they did not, host the super host the regional they didn't host postseason games so he didn't get to see the full experience i think finally he's able to see it this year and i think he's he realized that this year like man all right i was told i i I knew kind of what to think but i didn't really know and now i know i'm gonna be honest with you when you say to see it to me for for him that means i feel like he's gotten a chance to see it in lsu as a thing outside of winning a national championship so far. And the reason why I say it like that is because that last that last month before this postseason started, when the questions came so hard, so repeatedly about the struggles in the bullpen, you don't get peppered about that in college baseball like you do at LSU right. pretty much anywhere else. 100%. And you could see it start to wear on them. But when you start winning games again – those things kind of go malign. Now, it's a baseball season. We all know somewhere along that 56, somewhere along if you get the pro ball along that 160, you're going to struggle. It is what it is. But places like this, when you go to Major League Baseball and these huge marketplaces, the attention to it is just different. Mm-hmm. It just really is. And I feel like he finally got a, like a real chance to kind of see that because of the expectations this team had to start the year, Right. Got a real chance to see that this year. And then now you said the real chance to, to experience postseason baseball here. And there's one more real experience that he's looking for here. Yeah, no so. doubt. And I, I think that, you know, he's been there before. So I think that's going to help, obviously, with the experience. I, I, the next thing that I don't think he's going to realize until he sees it is how well LSU is going to travel to Omaha. Yeah. Right? Like, hey, you know, y'all been great all year. Come out and support us in Omaha. I don't think he realizes that three fourths of the stadium is going to be LSU fans while they play. Like, I don't think he realizes that the hotel is going to be filled with LSU fans. Like when we won the national championship, really leading up to the national championship in Omaha, the entire hotel lobby, every time we would come to and from a game was packed. When we won the national championship, it was lines of people to like the second store floor of the of the embassy suites, you can look at the inside. Like it was, it is something that not not I don't know if any other school experiences, and I don't think he even knows what what to expect because nobody's seen it unless you've been here. Lloyd, Lloyd, you're making a you're making a double trip, right? Like there, there's this is going on. LSU's getting there, but you are already gonna go there, correct? Is that is that right? Oh yeah, I was going regardless. Why were you going already? 
Because we booked, we had to book the trip all, already. We just bet on we did a futures bet on LSU going to Omaha. You, so you booked what kind of trip though? We'll be there. We're going Wednesday through Sunday. Jesus yeah. Christ, I'm running party. around the question. No, I don't know. I, I think we should about double trip. Yeah, I said party. A double trip. So you booked a bachelor's party trip to Omaha for what? Not just because you wanted to go, because you expected who LSU to, be there. to go there. See, what he's now understanding and now starting to see is that like LSU fans, they either book to be there the entire time because they're like, hey, bro, look, that's when we get here, this we're, is what usually happens. Yeah. They book to be there in the back end of the trip because it's like, hey, if I'm going to book to be here, I'm trying to see a championship, mm -hmm. right? So now getting to go there and see the whole thing like full spectrum, it's different. It hits different. It, it, it plays different. And LA, there's no other fan like this fan base. And it's crazy to see it. But you are the perfect example of it, man. It's just kind of how it goes. Iranian bachelor trips are on a normal trip. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not just me. It's obviously, it, that's how LSU fans are. You know, we're all in, invested in this, and we it's did not, this three it, months ago. I, I, I highly doubt whoever the bachelor is in this situation said, hey, man, look, we're going to have a bachelor party. Man, all right, this is the only weekend we all got free. Can we please just go to Omaha, Nebraska? I love that place. Right. <laughs> that, I highly doubt that's how it went, right? So planning it around, trying to get there when the Tigers are there, there you go. You know, like that's... That's what an LSU fan base would do, and it's going to be something special. And it is. To, and to your credit and to your point, I feel like y'all said it kind of succinctly where Jay doesn't really know, but it feels like after the regional, where they were, it felt like they were a little tight, especially him, because he knew if he could get to a super where it's a, you could turn it into a two game series, they looked much looser this weekend than they did the previous weekend where it felt a little strained. And now I think whatever he just gets to Omaha. They're going, he's going to have that kind of wide-eyed look again where he's like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's like this, the support for LSU baseball. Because he keeps saying it week after week where he's, oh, this is the best game I've ever coached. And then he did it again this week. He's like, this is the best environment I've ever been in. And so to his credit, I mean, he's helped build this back up to where LSU, it feels like, is going to be a perennial force. And I think he'll get that support again in Omaha whenever he gets there and look around and go, oh, this is a home game. Which is going no. to be electric. Hey, you don't back your way into Omaha. No. You gotta be you gotta be playing. You gotta good. earn it. You gotta earn it, you gotta, you gotta be playing it. well. Well and he's had to deal with a lot of criticism coming up to this with how whether it be the weather, which wasn't his fault, there's nothing he can do about that, or throwing skeins against Tulane. Like he's been they the people have put pressure on him that are, you know, fan the fan base has because they love LSU so much and they want they have an opinion. And when LSU gets this close, it, every decision you make becomes very maligned, regardless of what camp you're in. And for him to be able to handle that pressure shows you how he's going to be able to coach in Omaha. He's built for this. And LSU feels like they're built for this run. Well, one thing he does well is he does – he has his plan, right? This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And he doesn't stray away from what he believes in, in right? He doesn't, he doesn't stray away from what he believes is the right move for his team, right? He knows these guys better than anybody else. He's been around them for, you know, one or two years. And so he understands – what's best and he understands the makeup of this team and so he sticks to his guns right let me look look at what Tennessee did this past weekend they didn't start uh Dillander until Saturday mm -hmm. they lost their first game they didn't start their ace until Saturday now their ace threw a complete game on Saturday and threw really well and they won that game or Sunday whatever it was game two game two and you know and I'm not saying that would have happened in the regional but my point is, Jay said, "Hey, this is what I'm going to do," and we're going to. And he did it with conviction, and he made the moves, and that's how. And he stuck to it. He didn't care, didn't waver. This is how I'm going to go. This is my plan, and we're going to go with it. And that's you got to respect them for it, whether they win or lose. You're going to go down doing it the way you want to do it, and that's that's impressive. Fucking Riley Cooper is unbelievable. Unbelievable. Um, before we move on to the next topic, well, not next topic. So continue the conversations. Jay Johnson. Jay Johnson Monday, brought to you by our friends at Heineken Silver. Heineken Silver was there's a lot of Heineken Silver that were being uh, put be down flowing. put down this past weekend at our tailgates and uh, you know look, the tailgate ended up being a little longer than we anticipated. <laughs> Heineken, <laughs> Heineken Heineken Silver is uh, you know Heineken's version of their light beer is 95 calories, four percent alcohol. Actually tastes really really well, extremely good, and goes down really well. All people who have listened to our show and are are you know avid watchers and listeners of our show have come to us and said man we've we actually like you aren't lying like heineken's actually really good i'm like yeah 
we're not just going to give you false advertisement. Like, this is good stuff. Give it a shot. It's in every store. They do a really good job of advertising it. Uh, and we are very proud to be uh, partners with our friends at Hanukkah Consumer. I hate to take credit for the double, but... Thank you. And totally. Thank you. If you would have did it like a little more enth- and like enthusiastically, it might have things. been the homer. You, know? you tried to get away from it, and we, we still got the double out of it. So well, I just like to. That, the- I'm giving you the precursor for the next week. Okay. Don't don't think about it. No, yeah, I really don't have a choice. <laughs> don't have a choice. I have to pack some up for the ride. I don't know if they sell. Well, here's them in the Omaha. deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you're gonna talk about scheduled shows, Friday's gonna be a little difficult. To have a show. Because we have some travel plans. It'll be travel day. It'll be travel day for the team. For this team. Lloyd is going to be driving the 15 hours. Oh, the plane ticket shot up in price after a one win. Yeah. I shouldn't have put it off. Mm-hmm. That's shouldn't my have. fault. That is your fault. You knew you knew you were going regardless. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got talked into driving and I was like, yeah, that'll be fun. Then and I to be honest with you, I put off, I should have done it too. I should have booked the flight too. I just didn't want to jinx it, but you knew you were going anyway. Yeah. Your right? bank account's a little different. Than and mine. so, and so <laughs> I wish I had booked mine after, you know, I should have said, you know what? They are going to win the series, but I didn't want to, or after the first game should have done it. Didn't, but I booked my flight right before the show. We are going, here's another thing. If anybody listening to our show right now has access to a anything private jet, <laughs> I would love a couple seats on the jet. You can hang out with, I mean, as many as you want to give us, but you know, we will give you some stories. We'll entertain you. I'll pay a little bit for the fuel if you need me to. Um, it would help the show out a lot if you could do that. If not, no big deal, no hard feelings. I just feel like I should throw it out there in the universe. If anybody has any access to the team hotel, I was told I need to call them again tomorrow morning. So I will be, I'm a cat. I'll land on my feet. We'll figure it out. We're dudes. We're, yeah, we'll figure it out. I will get a room. But if there is an easier way to get a room, I will pay, obviously. I'm not worried, not asking for a handout. Just, you know, some access to an available room, preferably with two queen size beds, because so me and Jared don't have to sleep in the same bed. I'll sleep That'll in the be nice. We just put a pillow wall right in between. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I'd, I'd appreciate <laughs> that. Get a cot. Um, that's my little uh, pitch. Just we have a game time. There. We have a game time. What is the game time? It's Saturday at six o'clock. Let's go! I was hoping they get the night game. That's firm. I was hoping they get the night game. I'll tell you what, Omaha at this time of year is hot. It is Super hot. Super hot. It is hot. Very oh. hot. Saturday was maybe the hottest day of the year. Yeah, Saturday. I've never played a game hotter than game two or game one of Texas. The Texas series. I've never had to get a an IV playing anywhere except for in Omaha. I got one that game one too. Real life. I'm getting one tomorrow. Oh yeah, but you're getting it for different reasons. (laughs) Yeah, it's a little different reasons. Mm -hmm. Um so that's my little pitch for uh for this regardless, we are going to be there. We have we have the ability to get there. We already have it booked. Um, I will have a room booked, and we are going to have a show from Omaha. It'll be a special show, obviously. It'll be a different show. We'll have guests, plural, on the show. Uh, together. It'll be fun, too. You're going to get some insight to some of these players and yeah, things that... We're working on something a little different. Yeah, for the y'all. things that you probably haven't um, heard before. Heard before. You're gonna get some dirt. You're gonna get some, a lot of probably a lot of trash talking on yeah, these guys. We'll be sober. Yeah, maybe some drinks will be flowing. I think so. We plan on getting them in that after dark feel. Absolutely. Yeah. So, how responsible am I for this weekend? Like, what? A, you know? Oh, you're responsible. Oh. No, 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 no. Let me get that. I'm put this <laughs> on the air. New to me. I'm gonna get this on the air Work? for everybody. Work is to me. new to you. Stop it. Let me say this before we get there. We are not having the same incident that happened <laughs> in Hoover. Hoover. We are not. It is a first it'll off. A, it'll be a fun trip. It'll be a did fun. You, did you even think it would be different? Like, well, yes, I didn't know y'all were going until today. Why does that matter? We oh. told you that we were probably going to go. Yeah, probably is different than definitely. Okay. Here's the deal. When we have this show, I feel like this isn't going to be my fault. When we have this show. <laughs> no, this is 100%. I'm telling you right now, so you can put it in your head. I know. I'm put it in your calendar. Figure this thing out. When we have our show and we are done and you are supposed to post it, the first thing you do, priority number one, <laughs> is making sure this is posted, especially with the type of show that we're about to have. 
and then you can do your shenanigans. And I will make sure that you, we do it with plenty enough time for you not to be able to rush. Okay? Promise me on air. I promise. Nope. With some conviction. What Give day? it to me. I'm not telling that you that doesn't right now. matter. <laughs> like literally does not matter. Does not matter. <laughs> I'm gonna need a ride. With some conviction. Let's do a show and I'll help with the show. Well, that's a that is a <laughs> back <laughs> way in. No, you are going to do your job in Omaha. Correct? Yes, I will do my job in Omaha. Before anything else. Win one for the Gipper. Before anything else. For Abella. I will not hurt you. I would hope not. I don't want to let not, you down again. I will again. not put you in a situation where you're not going to have a good time. But that is your priority. I have responsibility. Yeah, that is your priority. Of course. To the team. One day. One, one, one day. day. And it's not even a whole day. It's a few hours. I've been looking forward to it now. Okay. Just making sure we got that out. Okay. I don't Let's know. get it straight. I need to put it in the suitcase. I'm trying to think of what to... How much do I need to bring? As many, as much as you can. I don't know, Coach. You're driving. I, I don't, I don't oh, take. Well, I'm trying to back my way into a flight, also. Well, but... if you end up driving, I'm saying. Yeah. I'm so, excited now. I don't take the group as a very heavily packed group, so I feel like we. No, there's it's a bunch room. of bums. <laughs> there's room. <laughs> so, just to clarify, game is on Saturday, 6 p.m. Which means that they have to play. On, they're not playing on Sunday. They'll play on Monday. So their second game is on Monday, regardless. Correct. Did you stay for the second game too? Yeah. yeah me too. All yeah. right. Um, it, it's Father's Day on Sunday too. It's a little precursor. Ooh, yeah. Hint, hint. Put the yeah. Put the pieces together. Put the pieces together. So do you go skiing Saturday? Yes. Yeah. Skiing goes game one. <laughs> All right. Already come out the losers bracket. There's, skiing comes goes out game one sets the tone. They are going. Is the game Tennessee Southern Miss game on? No, no still not man, playing. Still yet. delayed. But y'all want to win that. That's the thing. Southern Miss. I, I mean, I would pick Southern Miss. So, so here's my thing. I want that revenge. Nah. I mean, you got revenge on both sides. Yeah, we already beat Tennessee. No, three three. but you beat them when it didn't. Then they could knock. They knocked us out of the postseason. I wanted yeah. to beat Tennessee. And also, I'll tell you another reason because we've seen two teams face Paul for a second time, and the strikeout numbers. Go down a good bit, and yeah, then, for both, him to get the record, I would love to see a lineup that season for the first time. Actually, you know what? You you convinced me right there. Yeah. Give me Fair Southern enough. Miss, someone who hasn't seen him yet. Someone, yeah, give me that. I'm going for that. So and and to I'll so, let I'll let my uh, my picks be wrong by one if if that's what it mm-hmm. that's what it takes. And so, we'll yeah. talk about this I as the week too. goes on. Huh? I picked Tennessee too. I know. Uh, he yeah. struck he struck out nine guys in his last start, so now he is. Uh, 14? No. Yeah, 15 four- to break it. 14 to tie. It. That's what I was getting at. Yeah. Hijacked what I was saying there. 14 to tie it. 15 to break it. I think that he could break it with the next start. He's not going to need two more starts. Um, he may not need two more starts to break it. That would be insane if he broke it in one start. I mean, it would be par for I mean, the he's course. He's done 15 for That's what I'm saying. It would be par for the course. But that would be an unbelievable showing in Omaha in his first appearance there to be to knock down 15 guys. That would be electric if he gets. Well, I could care if it was his first or last appearance. Right. That's, I mean, that's still impressive. I think he's playing his. I think he's pitching his best baseball right now. Me too. His and last two starts were two of his best starts of the year. Maybe the two best starts of the year. And you were, you were saying earlier that there was a particular start, and I'm trying to remember what Arkansas. you said. Arkansas, wherever it felt like he the numbers weren't his best, but but he had the opportunity to not rely on his fastball so much, and I think that unlocked a whole different level of schemes. Yeah, it, well, he had the opportunity to actually have to pitch. Not have to, because he's been doing that all year, but... It wasn't just fastball. He was able, yeah, he yeah. was able to see what they were, how they were approaching him, and he made the adjustment, and he was able to throw different pitches. He was able to approach these hitters differently. Hats off to Arkansas, because they had a, a great game plan. They, they had really good at-bats against them, and they made it tough on him, but... The way he was able to mix and match, and the way he was able to pitch a little backwards sometimes, the way he was able to throw his two seamers to righties, like he, didn't, he hadn't seen that all year. And I think that you start to see him carry that to the next couple starts. And you'll be able to ask him about it. I will be able to ask him about it. When and that's here in nine minutes. Have um, you communicated with him? Because um, we got to let him know the gate code and all. I will text him right now. I don't have his number. Put it on the ticker, Lloyd. <laughs> What, the gate code? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, y'all are more than welcome to come on over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't much, ain't much of here. 
Lloyd. Um, <laughs> yes. I just got a text message. Text message from our friend. But wait, let me. I don't want to. I don't want to lose my train of thought. Let me text our Back. friend Paul and tell him that um, what the code is. But I got a text from. Is it pound first? Yeah. No. No, it's next. Oh, no, it's, it's last. After. That's right. It's. Yeah, I got it. that. Then pound. You're twenty percent there. Um, people. So I got a text from our friends at Heineken just now. So how are y'all road tripping to Omaha? Question mark. Question mark. I will load you down with beer. Yes, we are. I am not. You are. And I will get you loaded down with beer as long as you can document the road trip for Mike Up. Yes, these are all billable hours all of a sudden. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. I will get the boys on the Heineken Silver train. Excellent. Heineken Silver? Maybe, she, maybe she'll give you some, some other stuff in there. Some other brands that one, Heineken yeah, owns. I would, if she wants to give those, uh, those little margaritas that they have. Those um, things are so well, I will request. I will request for you. It's like 8% alcohol in those dogs. Let's just make sure you're not behind the she's, wheel. Uh, she's probably I'm not li- driving. Honestly, My friends know. She's probably listening. Absolutely. So why don't you go ahead and p- give your pitch of why she should supply you with uh, some beverages. You can't drink and drive, obviously. No I, open I, containers. I, I don't it's even. For, it's only for whenever y'all get there. Exactly. I feel like Omaha might be a dry county. I don't know. It probably, it's probably. I don't know if dry. they. I don't it's even dry know. It's not dry. I don't know if they have Heineken Silver there, though. But, but you'll have one way to guarantee it is there. It's for us to bring it on the road with us. And they no drinking and driving. We will drink responsibly and we'll drink irresponsibly whenever we get there. <clears throat> but load us down. We will not disappoint because not only is this for me, it's for LSU baseball. Wow. Lloyd will have a loaded car. Definitely marks ten percent alcohol. She said don't shortchange it. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's a booze cruise. Silver and Heineken. Let's go. Let's go. Also, how Maybe about keggers? We were all there. Well, I, mean, about, I mean, for anyone else road tripping, if you see Lloyd on side of the road, please pick him up. And bring, <laughs> him up. <laughs> bring him on. He's got to work him for one day this week. <laughs> but how about the fans? Everybody booing the drink responsibly. That the was unbelievable. Love that. Board. Love that. I'll tell you what. I thought at one point the bleachers in, in right center field were going to fall. The student section? Yeah. Like, I thought they were going to fall. It was, it was hopping, dude. It was, it was awesome. The energy was awesome. Shout out for all of the complaints that the fans and students mm-hmm. have had on the actual music that is being played or cross saying, look, things need to get better. I was told over the weekend that things there are things in motion for next year to change up some of the stadium to make it a lot more fan friendly, a lot more fun, and honestly, a lot more. Uh, it's going to be a lot tougher for uh, the visiting team to warm up in the bullpen. Just keep that in mind whenever it happens. Um, but shout out to whoever was controlling the music because in the postseason, you're not allowed to play walk-up music. You just aren't. That's just that's an unfair advantage. So you can't play walk-up music for when the, hit, the guys come up to the plate. Um, but you're still allowed to play music in between innings or in pitching changes or these types of things to be able to just to have music playing. Um, and so being... St- you know, savvy sold separately. Being savvy, they when Gavin Gidry comes in to close the game, now there's a pitching change. You need to play some music in between innings or in between this pitching change. You know, who knows what music comes out and ends up being a good one, right? It ends up being the one that he wants to hear probably. Probably maybe, maybe his favorite song that he likes and that starts playing over the airwaves. And then... There's a down period too. Whenever there's a pitching change before Dylan Cruz's last at bat, all of a sudden, a very good tune comes over the loudspeaker. That's very familiar to a lot of fans that have been coming to games throughout the course of the year. That to me was awesome. It was a good move. It was a good move. Early curtain call? Uh, maybe. Well, maybe. they were doing that all weekend. Like whoever was next, whoever let off the inning, they usually played their walk-up song. Right, it was like the, the pregame, yeah. whatever music. But Dylan himself commented on it and said it made him like. A little more nervous. Yeah, it said it juiced him up. He was like, oh, God, like this is, you know, it made him kind of realize the moment that they were in whenever the walk-up song came on. He's like, this is my last time I'll hear this in this stadium. Everybody's clapping along to uh-huh. it. It was, that was perfect, perfect timing. I'm still shocked. At that. I mean, he let it all out. That was awesome. That was awesome. It was a bikey reaction. It gave me a lot of, it gave me, I mean, it was not like emotional, crying emotional, but like 
Great emotions, like goosebumps. Oh, no, I saw yeah. a tear. I saw one tear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was it was special. It was a special moment for him. He deserved that moment. Um, and look, I understand. I understand why Jay didn't take him out, right? Like the game is still somewhat in the same, balance. It's the same reason why Thatcher was up so much. Right. And like, why he didn't come in. You so don't early. want to take the chance of something crazy happening and your best player is not on the field in that situation. But I think it would have been awesome, <clears throat> awesome, if Jay was able to make a defensive replacement in the, in the, in the bottom of the ninth with two outs so that he could have got the standing O from the crowd, right? That would have been great. I understand why he couldn't do it. Um, but hopefully, hopefully, he gets that ovation in the game, in the championship game in Omaha. And if he, the game's about, because you got it. I did. And if, if he doesn't, hopefully he just goes bonkers. So bonkers. Each, each one of the at-bats feels yeah. like it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And Skeen's got his moment. Skeen's got his moment. Very well deserved. That's how, it should, that's how he should have gotten his moment. Um, that was electric. Great atmosphere. Great I've never atmosphere. been a part of a regional. Congratulations. Congratulations. You've never been a two? No. Wow. So that was my first time. I mean, that's a, not an easy ticket to get. Yeah. And uh, so not. to be you a part of that. think he's got a military background or no? Yeah. <laughs> pray, let's, on let's time, a, I, I, think boy, I think the I think the boys are here. Let's take a uh, minute break, get them situated, and uh, we'll be right back. I know they don't want to hear us talk anymore. They want to hear them talk. You're watching Mike Dub. We'll be back to you in one minute. But before we go into our break, I want to give a shout out to, like I said, we, we talk about us getting new partners, new sponsorships all the, all the time. We have a new sponsor, and you've probably seen them on the top left corner in the little uh, little spinner logo, F FCO Solutions. Our friends on at FCO, they're out of Lafayette. They're a civil construction company. They specialize in new multifamily construction, all right? If you don't know what civil engineering is, I mean, civil construction is, that's okay. Probably a lot of people don't understand it. They basically get the land ready to be built vertically, right? I'm giving you a little bit of a construction lesson here. I don't know much Crash about course. it. I've learned it. I've learned it on the go, right? They specialize in site drainage, site utilities, earthwork, site cleaning, house pads, ponds, demo work, and hurricane cleanup. So they do anything that involves dirt, basically, or the earth. And a lot of that gets done before, it has to be done before you are building whatever development you are trying to build. So our friends at EFCO have been fans of the show. They are really, really good people. They are down there in Lafayette. If you know anybody from Lafayette, you do know me, Jay Mitch. is from New Iberia, I'll consider that Lafayette. It's 337 area code. There you go. 337, 337 area code. They are unbelievable people. Um, they do a very, very, very good job, and they are committed to growing and being the best at what they do. So I just want to give a shout out to our friends at EVCO. Um, I know that they listen. Appreciate you guys. We are going to be great partnerships. Like, hell, maybe you're gonna have, are you going to have a Heineken Silver for the game, maybe? I don't want one now. You're going to shotgun another one? You want another? I don't know if you should shotgun because we saw how that went last time. You I, don't know. I, I feel like you got to redeem yourself. I, I, you know, know. you can have a drink. I don't think you should shotgun it. The way okay, it went, I'll, I'll, I'll I enjoy should, this I think one. you should chug it. But maybe not shotgun it. The maybe way it went that. last time, it's... Yeah, I can do, I mean, can't I can do it. anything. I know. All right, fuck it. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Go for it. There. Oh, that's much better. One, two, Open, three, Open it up a little bit. You four, know what I mean? Five, six, seven, eight, okay. nine, Okay, so ten, now it's starting to drip. 11, now you're struggling a little bit. Twelve. It's pretty good. Thirteen. <laughs> it's not bad. I'll give not you a bad. Ah. Twelve and a half seconds there. How was it? Was it good? Delicious. You delicious. can't do delicious. that. With a regular one. With a regular one. Right. You can only do that <laughs> with the silver. With the silver. Why? Because the silver's lighter. It's, it's got lighter. 95 calories. Mm. It's pretty crisp. That's not even, that wasn't even cold. I know you don't really, you don't necessarily need a cold beer. That was room temp. That's but the, the, the I respect how quickly you turned around and gave me a full sentence. That was quick. Oh, like yeah. That. No, no, officer, I'm fine. Like you've been, looking, you've been, you've been <laughs> around before. straight line, kid. Yeah. yeah. You've then, been around before, but. It was, it's just breakfast. It's a very good beer. <laughs> It it's is. very light beer. It's something that you can easy to drink. Easy to drink. Easy to pour. Easy to pour. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that you know I think it should be in the rotation at, at tailgates, especially with LSU baseball coming up. We'll get into some of the LSU baseball conversation. Dozy Place is located on 3723 Government Street. Everybody knows about their wall of famous steaks. 
and their hot tamales, which, which you may not know, is that they're open for lunch every day from 11 to 2. Great people, great environment. Their lunch menu is fire. What's the best thing on the menu? If you haven't tried it yet, you need to try the burger. Unbelievable, best burger in town. Best burger in town. If you're looking for lunch, 11 to 2, at Doe's Eat Place. Again, they're located on 3723 Government Street. Give them a shot. Welcome back to Miked Up. Uh, you don't have to listen to us talk anymore. We've done it for a long time. We got the two of the superstars in here. Paul Skeens, appreciate you coming in. And Thatcher Hurd, appreciate you coming in. Uh, we had to adjust the speakers a little bit because, or the mics a little bit because y'all are enormous people. And that's- Big guys in here. I hate, I hate, cannot stand sitting next to pitchers or staying next to pitchers <laughs> because y'all are always way taller. I'm six foot one, I'm like, Five foot seven because y'all are six eight and six five and six four. However, how tall are you? Six three, six, six four. Six four, six, four. Yeah. exactly. You know what? Six ten, six <laughs> eight. Six six. Six six. <laughs> Whatever. I had Renato was six seven. It was it was brutal. Uh, all right, let's get to it. Talk to me about last night. Obviously, y'all come here for a reason, right? You tra you transferred to LSU to play um, at the best place in college baseball, right? They've we've six championships, best fans in baseball. They're gonna play against the best competition. Um, y'all got to experience Alex Box Stadium at its peak, right? Y'all super regional at home at night. I'm glad, kind of glad the game got rained, uh, postponed because y'all deserved the night game. Um, did it live up to expectations? Did it exceed expectations? Give me, run me through this weekend. Uh, yeah, it was pretty much everything I could have asked for. Uh, obviously, that's why you come to LSU. And I knew, I knew we were going to be playing in a super regional, playing for Omaha. Um, we've been talking about it for 10 months and for it to, you know, finally be here and go pretty much as well as it could have was, you know, everything we could have asked for. Yeah. I mean, I was praying to get the ball that last game and, uh, but, uh, what was Saturday night game one, yeah. uh, they're announcing the lineups and then they did, you know, they announced the start nine and then Paul, they did his and how loud was it? I got chills. Yeah, yeah. It was so yeah. sick. And then the, the anthem was sick. So. I had chills, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, regional the game before, I think he told me the same thing. It got, you know, they do the slow clap, and I was out there on the mound, and I got chills. It was, it's so cool. So, I mean, last night, this past weekend, it's like that's one of the things you come here for, and, and you start the year, and there's a list of goals that you have. Obviously, this is one. The tournament starts; it's the tournament, but you're still playing at home stadium and stuff like that. At what point of the night last night? Because I feel like when you punch the ticket to go to Omaha, that's one of that's what that's the feeling where you're like, all right, this is different. Like I'm, this is a real chance to dance now. At what point of the night last night did you feel like this is happening tonight? Like this is gonna happen tonight? Was it the eighth inning you threw in the bullpen, or I feel like yeah, you I was a, getting hot for a while. I feel like you threw an entire game. I finish finish answer the question. My bad. Yeah, what, what do you think? I mean, I don't know. I mean. They hit a leadoff home run, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Like, we're going to still win this game. Like, yeah, there was no doubt in my mind that we were winning. I don't – I mean, after the game on, on Saturday, um, you know, it was like, all right, like, just got to go out there and execute, and then we're going to, you know, do it, and we're going to have a fun night and, you know, get to celebrate, you know, our season. And, I mean, we're five five wins away, so it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, after, uh, after Hoover, we all got together as a team, and, you know, we – we just we connected a lot. We we laid out this is how we're gonna do it, and then, I mean, from first pitch of regional uh, last weekend, it was just like, this is this is the right style of baseball. And then, uh, when Paul goes out, you know, and he he does it, he executes the plan, but you know, you got sometimes take a grain of salt because it's one on one with the hanger. <laughs> yeah. Like here's the plan. So I'm charting. I'm like, well, if you go three straight heaters, it'll work. <laughs> if you just throw that one. It's going to be okay. Yeah, so we'll watch baseball, and it'll be like, he'll throw, like, someone will throw 96, go fouled off, and be like, you know what I would have done right there? Probably go one-on-one -on, -one on the block. <laughs> <laughs> well, your first game, I mean, your first inning, you're 100 to 103 miles an hour, probably for the first three innings. Like, 
I don't, you weren't trying to juice it up, but like the adrenaline was there. Yeah, I, I was trying. I was trying. Yeah, no, it's not stopped. I was trying. It's hard. You know what? It's hard to juice it up and still be around the zone. You're you're all over it. Yeah, I mean, I pretty much go as as hard as I can and still be around the zone. I love that. Um, Makes you it sound easy. Yeah, you're, yeah. Must be nice. Just throw as hard as I can, right where I want so to. So you're you're on the mound. I, I actually because I'm I'm not a huge fan. Of umpires sometimes, like the way they try to get him in trouble. They try to bait you and they try to like act like just bullshit. Felt like, and you don't just like you know bad mouth. But I feel like the home plate umpire was trying to bait you at one point in your start, and he was look. He kept looking around the catcher, and you're on the mound. You're like talking to me. Yeah. Can you like just what went in? What happened there? Yeah, I don't know. He, uh, there were some pitches that I thought were strikes. Which and I did too. some other people probably thought there were strikes. <laughs> yeah. And it's not like, you know, we did a bad job framing. I'm like, we did a good job presenting them. And I was just out there. I was kind of like laughing. I'm like. like yeah, I can tell you. Because it felt like the umpire was looking. He was like trying to bait you to say something so that he can make it about him and say, hey, you're, you're out or done or whatever. But I can't stand that. And so I just didn't know if, if there was words exchanged or if it was just. You just looked at him and smiled and said, okay. And then you shook the guy out with a 102 mile an hour fastball. And, or I think it was a slide. I don't know. Whatever it was. You shook the next guy out. Yeah. You know, and then, but yeah, you, know, you, got a, you got a swing and miss. And he was like, you have to call yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. And then he knew about it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, did you feel like you were going to go in? Like, did you, did you, like, what did, he, what did Jay tell you when you were warming up? Because I talked to him and he was like, you know, I didn't know. I needed him ready, but I also needed him ready to pitch the next day. But I feel like you threw 75 pitches in the bullpen. And, like, did you feel like at one point in the game that you were going to be the guy to, to end it? Or did you kind of feel like, oh, I'm just kind of just here just to be here just, you know, for tomorrow? Um, did you think it was a realistic shot of going in? Yeah, and, like, the sixth, I, I try to stay ready the whole game because yeah. you just never know. And then, uh, but around the sixth, he called me up and he said, hey, we're going to send Coop back out and then – Gidry's going back out, and then we want to give you a clean inning for the 8th or the ninth. And so I thought, you know, I was just going to be ready for whenever. So I just kept throwing to stay hot, and then... Kept I'll, throwing, huh? Yeah, just kept throwing. <laughs> Threw a lot of bullets. You threw a lot <laughs> of bullets. Yeah. Yeah. At one point in the night, I looked down, I'm like, bro, he's thrown two games in the game. Yeah. <laughs> Check so this I, out. I don't got to throw a touch tomorrow. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but once Gavin, he got two outs in the ninth, I'm like, I'm going to get ready to dogpile it. I so, love that. And, and honestly, y'all did a good y'all did the the major league baseball dog pile where nobody actually gets on the ground and y'all kinda of stand up or like kinda of like keep it. It found its way to the ground. It did. Way, yeah. yeah, at some point we're like, you know, so that's good. Nobody gets hurt yeah. on the on the bottom Last of the Last thing we need is someone's spike going in Dylan's eye. No, yeah. <laughs> no <Jesus>. doubt. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, that was good. That was good. <laughs> Talk me through your season, right? You come in here, obviously. With the expectations of of being the guy, you are a guy. You are the guy. You've had some ups and downs. You come last year. You kind of banged up a little bit. You come in here. You uh, you know have a couple starts in Texas. You kind of shove, and then you kind of go through some ups and downs. You're out the bullpen. You're starting. You're out the bullpen. You kind of have this jack of all trades role. But over the last I feel like month and a half, I feel like something clicked, or you found something, or whatever it was, and you've been the guy that you know that you are. Talk me through that. What happened? Like what what did you work on what click to make you kind of get back to your old self and talk about kind of overcoming that adversity? Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's a lot of ups and downs, and uh, I just tried to stay level. You know, I knew if stick to my plan every single day, and you know, I was going to get on the other side of it. So you know, it was tough, but uh, a lot of talk with with Paul. We talked a lot about a lot of mindset stuff. Uh, I talked to Wes and Coach Jay a lot, obviously, and. Um, so yeah, with with Coach West, it was just a lot about simplifying. You know, it all starts it all starts over the white. You know, as as stupid as that may sound, but until we find a better way than strike one, that's the best way to do it. So really focused on that, and that you know that process. You know, I'm gonna now I know I'm gonna be back in the zone, and then start to execute a plan, execute my strengths some more. So it just you know it was a process. It, it was it was tough at times, but just stuck with it every day. And was there anything mechanical or was there anything like, you know, to, to tweak in your delivery or is it just more of, hey, just got to keep doing what I'm going, I'm going to get in rhythm, I'm going to figure it out. Is there anything that you changed or is it more of just, just keep doing it and, and I'm going to figure it out? I think there was a little sequencing yeah. uh, where I would kind of open up, you know, lose some deception and then, you know, the direction would get a little off. Uh, we cleaned that up, you know, and 
So it was a little of both, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just about being competitive, getting ahead of counts. When did when did that cleanup happen? Because I'm imagining whenever he got Paul's glove. Well, no, <laughs> I mean, I'm imagining like stuff like that. The numbers usually come after, but you actually usually feel something. Yeah. A little bit before. When did that happen? No, yeah. we're hitters, so we're a little bit more mental midgets, maybe sometimes than pitchers. So like for me, if I don't feel, I feel. Then all of a sudden, I feel it on swing. Oh, I'm back. I'm like, well. You're an idiot. I think it's like, I think it's figure this out. Right I think y'all right. getting y'all hit way more than we do. <laughs> Dead ass. <laughs> yeah, I never, I never had like a like a click. I'm like, this is it. Yeah. You know, I, I knew it would take some time, and that's when I talked talked it through with with Wes and stuff. It's just staying with it, but you know, I felt like I had some outings from like the stuff was good, you know, but the counts were bad, so I got beat. So I mean, it was just kind of like taking something from every outing and learning from it and then good or bad just flushing it and moving on and, and learning from it did, did you feel a little like uncomfortable this year by just getting the pitch or like <laughs> oh yeah it was weird at the beginning yeah and I, I would take bp uh you know um, out of habit had, what's up just out of habit yeah so no we had like a, a you know specific regimen of like days that i would hit mm-hmm. and i'm throwing every day and uh, so I would like take BP on like Thursdays and Sundays and Tuesdays or something like that. And, um, you know, so I'm taking BP and did that for a while. Um, and then I realized at some point, like, Probably they, don't, gonna... they don't want me to go in the game, like, <laughs> especially with the teams, like, because, if, you know, realistically, I was just going to go in the game on a, on a Tuesday or something like right, that. Right, right. And the teams we were playing then were probably going to, you know, there was a chance that they were going to yeah. give me a hand or something like that. So it, it was a weird uh kind of adjustment but I've, I've realized recently that I definitely think a lot more like a pitcher than, than a hitter at this point well I feel like I feel like I mean I, and you know but I mean I don't know what's going through your head but as being a hitter right like there's a different mentality on the mound right you kind of see it through Gavin Guidry right as a hitter when you're a hitter you got to get ready to play every day you kind of have a different mentality at the plate and sometimes you you know when a hitter becomes a pitcher you kind of see that mentality roll over you kind of see it with him you know, he's almost, like, too young to even realize, like, what he's doing up there and, like, to, to kind of take away from his confidence. Do you kind of feel like you kind of brought that? Because you pitch, you're obviously, one, you're really good, so that helps with the confidence level, but you're uber confident on the mound. Like, do you think that had any um, crossover whenever you said, okay, I'm just going to be the be a pitcher? Oh, uh, for sure. I think I've always pitched with, pitched with that a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, you kind of – you have to have that as a hitter because it's, it's such right. a failure sport and – uh, that's one thing with Kidry that's like he's out there and he does some stuff and it's like all right like this kid like yeah there's a lot more than than what what he's showing right now and even what he's showing right now is I mean he closed out a super regional yesterday yeah. like three innings yeah, three innings yeah, pretty darn good and not he, he even pick up a ball, a ball he didn't throw off the mound all in the fall probably not even all the beginning of the spring yeah right? like yeah. Not until the season like oh yeah that's kind of like we were playing we had a guy on our team. Chad Jones. I don't know if y'all ever heard of this guy, Chad Jones. He was a third rounder in the NFL as a free safety. He was six foot three, two hundred and forty pounds as a free safety, and he was an outfielder. And he would hit. He was a starting outfielder, and then he left to go play football. And I took his position as a freshman, which was great. So I was happy that he left because I was able. Then he came back. There's no position. He tells Coach Mary one day, "Hey, I can pitch. We didn't have a lefty. I can pitch." And he was 93 off the mound with a banger of a slider. Kind of the same thing. Never picked up a ball up until that point. Ended up being like our lefty guy out the pen, kind of similar to to Gavin Gidry. So it's I kind of I kind of understand, you know, that side of it. That he didn't pick up a ball, and all of a sudden, and you almost yeah. need those kind of moments to be right. able to make a run like y'all are on, where it comes from. You don't know who it's going to come from, but to have Gidry as a freshman step up and go, I can close it out. And the, like the way he's not only pitching with confidence, but like he's telling you he's he's confident. So I know you were over there getting hot for three and a half innings but whenever he was whenever he took the mound I did I felt like y'all felt like he's gonna close this thing out oh yeah well talk to me about what makes him good obviously not the mind not just the mindset right he throws that breaking ball and people who don't know baseball are like oh he throws it's a slider and it's not you know it's just a break how you not hit it but like this thing's super sharp and it falls off the table like talk a little bit about what makes him and y'all both can speak on this what makes him really good you know on the mound and what makes the slider so effective yeah, he's, he's got a lot of carry on his fastball, which is probably from playing short. Like, you see JT make his throws, yeah. and they just carry. He has the same type of of uh, play on his fastball, and then his slider is really unique. It's it's really top to bottom, and he throws it firm, and he just suffocates the strike zone. Yeah, so, competitive. Yeah. You know what's cool? Like, watching him do that uh, to, to clinch it, like, you can tell he's definitely 
like picturing himself doing that his whole yeah. life, so, which is really cool. Talks a little shit to himself too in the mound, which is yeah. great. You need a closer to do that. Yeah. Um, you talked about mindset. You talked about y'all talk a lot about the mental part of the game, right? That's the biggest to me. That's the biggest part of baseball. Um, you know, we talk a lot about it. We've you know I've gone through a lot of baseball in my life. I've gone through a lot of times where I thought I stuck sucked because baseball is so hard. And times where you think you're good, you're never as good as you think you're. You're never as bad as you think you're playing. You're never as good as you think you're playing. Um, were you all? Did you always have that mindset, or is that something that you had to develop through Air Force, through here, um, or did you have that going into college? Yeah, I've, I've definitely had to develop it. I think I had it coming into college, but I've definitely developed it as I've gone on. Um, you know, but I've you know I've also been put in situations where you know my freshman year I, I was a closer. Um, you get the homer. To- yeah, you know, I did. yeah. <laughs> got the win, but get the win. No, proudly. Like that was, that was really cool, and like yeah. I, I probably think that's cooler than than he does. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm you know, like I got put in situations where you know I I could succeed as long as I executed, and um, you know, it, it's it's really cool when you can just stay out of your own way. Um, yeah, you know, to to just go out there and, and execute. It can, at that point, it's just you know mental, dude. I, I I always love talking to guys who got a chance to hit on a higher level. No slide to you. It's just a different mindset. Being on the mound after hitting in college as well, how much more confidence does that give you just knowing, hey, it is actually as hard as people think it is when you're in the box? Yeah, I mean, there have been a lot of times where it's like, you know, I have a terrible game and – you know, we're, no, 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 oh. hit it, hit it, oh, yeah. Okay. Hit it. Uh, yeah, the, specifically my freshman year, and there were, there were a bunch of games that year, I feel like, where I had a terrible game, and we're winning like 3-2 or something, and it's like, okay, I can, you know, help us win, uh, you know, by closing it out, and, um, you know, that it's, especially with how, how, you know, failure-driven hitting is, like, to go out there and be able to, um, you know, have everybody else believe that you're going to succeed, you know, along with yourself. It's that, that's, I think that's definitely cultivated that in me. Um, you, you now this is, I'm looking from, from the outside looking in, right? Obviously throughout the course of the year, you've pitched exceptionally. You've been lights out, striking out between 10, 15 guys a game, doing everything you need to do. I felt like towards the back end of the season, right? You started getting towards the back end of the SEC into the tournament um, did you change some of the ways you pitched? Like, and I guess the, the one game that I'm pointing out, right, is Arkansas, right? And I don't care about the stat line at all. Like, that doesn't bother me. I know, talk to Jay, I know what the situation was. But it felt like you approached that lineup a little differently after that first inning, right? They were coming out aggressive, super aggressive on the fastball because they know you're around the zone. I felt like you were throwing, and I could be wrong, I feel like you're throwing more two seamers into righties, especially that you know the three or four hole guy, whatever his name is. Yeah, well, okay. just yeah, just felt like you were you mixed and matched a little bit di- differently than you had throughout the course of the years. That's something that you've kind of changed, and that's something that you've you it's just dependent upon the lineup that that you're facing. It's definitely dependent on the lineup, and like going into this past weekend, you know, knowing that obviously we faced Arkansas twice, oh, we faced Kentucky twice, um, so the plan has to change, you know, week to week. You know, Tulane. We knew they were going to come out swinging. Like right. just, I, I want to say they swing like 45 percent of the time as a team. You know, heading into that game, like just an unbelievable, you know, swing rate. So, um, that that Arkansas game. Uh, you know, there's obviously the plan that, that you have, mm-hmm. but you know, then you get into the game and you find out that you don't have a pitch or right. something like that. And that day, I did, did not have my slider. You know, for whatever reason, my you know my body was off, my sequencing was off. Um, just couldn't find the release point, and and so I, it was curveball over slider that day, um, you know. And they they did a good job grinding out at bats. So they did a really good job with their plan that day, you know, of just trying to touch the ball, foul off pitches because they knew I was on pitch count. So, um, but yeah, I mean, a, as the season goes on, you have to switch your plan up. But you know, a lot of that's just a week to week thing, and um, partially dependent on what we think they're going to do, you know, going into the week, and then obviously partially dependent on. Uh, what they do end up doing, and, and you yeah. can figure that out in the first couple innings. Same same type of question for you, right? So as the seasons progress, like the beginning of the season, it felt like this is me kind of nerding out on baseball a little bit because I like kind of like the behind the scenes stuff. It felt like your slider earlier in the year felt like more of like a cutter. 
towards the back end of the year, it looks like it's gained a little bit more depth. Is that something that you've like consciously worked on or is that something that just kind of naturally developed throughout the course of the year? Yeah, I definitely worked on more shape with the slider. Uh, it turned into the, the harder cutter kind of out of nowhere. I think it's with sequencing. I kind of, during the year, or before the season, I was working on pronating through the finish. And I think that put me a little more behind the slider. I gave it more of a, like a cutter look. And so once I got my sequencing right, you know, with staying close and, and using my the legs and, and you know, sequencing with the torso and all that, mm -hmm. I was able to, like, get my hand in a better position and then make it bigger, which was good. Yeah. So I didn't have to be so fine with it. Yeah. Well, that's great. For both of you guys. Sliders. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah. I, like I hate sliders. <laughs> I like it. For both of you guys being guys that were transfers this year, what coming into this league what's been the biggest difference for you like what have you seen day to day going through the sec and what's how has it been different for you and this what's is no changed? slight to you on air force but like you come from the pac-12 right so it's a more well-known conference i'm trying to be politically correct here but like you know they are known for being you know pretty good at baseball no, it's yeah, but it's but it's also because i mean yeah to, before you answer the question i think it's something that's said a lot and then once you do it you like all right, it is different. What's been different for you? The hitters are a lot better. It, I mean, one through nine in pretty much every SEC lineup, there's no there's no break. And I think um, if we were to just get thrown into it and, like, face the lineups that we did throughout the year, it would have been a lot different. But we faced, in my opinion, the best lineup <laughs> in the country – all fall. My opinion too. Yeah, yeah, yeah like in a lot of people's too. opinions. I mean, I, I mean, trade one more home where you got nine guys with double digits. Like, <laughs> yeah, that's stupid. That's yeah, so, um, yeah. I mean, we faced you know the best lineup mm -hmm. in the country. Every, I mean, I pitched against them seven times before in the fall, and then or six times in the fall, and then three more times in the spring. Um, so like, the 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 hitters are a lot better, but I think it's tough to say because it wasn't a linear. There was it wasn't like a it was like a you know, a step yeah. up from, from the mountain west. It was like a, it was a linear progression for yeah. me. And, you know, with, with that, you know, I got better, he got better. We, like, we all got better yeah. in that time. So the hitters are a lot better, but I think it, that's tough to answer too. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. And then with execution, you know, you, you got to execute pitches. You got to get in good counts. And, uh, you know, I felt at times uh, last year, you know, I was able to get guys out by changing speeds where, as this year, it, I think it comes down more to execution. Um, but, yeah, just pretty much exactly what Paul said with the lineups, one through nine. Um, pitching in this park where it, I feel like we've always felt like it played pretty fair, maybe even slightly bigger. Before these ball, before the golf balls. No, 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 obviously. Yeah, we, that's different. But <laughs> towards the middle of the field here, it plays pretty big. Around the SEC, going for you guys this year, where was the place where you're like, good Lord, this is a band box? South Carolina. Yeah. Georgia. Yeah. So, uh, South Carolina and Georgia, especially the right field of Georgia. <laughs> yeah, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a joke. That 350 don't play like 350 yeah, either. It's a, joke. There. it's a joke over there. Um, I'm sure Russ will love it. Yeah. We're So we're obviously <laughs> – we're a little older, obviously. Um, and I don't like to do the whole comparison thing, but don't, I do it because, you know, we played on the 09 team. He was a junior. I was a freshman on the 09 team. It was the last time we won a national championship. One of the biggest things that – you know, still to this day that I feel like we – reason why we won, not only were we good, but we had, like, the relationships that we had with each, with each other on the team, like the chemistry that we had. We're still – we have a group text that has, like, 24 or 25 guys on it. And out of those 24 guys, I think 18 of them were from that team, from that team right? So, like, we're still super close. We talk, It feels like y'all have that same energy and y'all have that same type of team. Like, y'all watch y'all celebrate. I watch y'all – you're wearing a Travinsky shirt, which I want to get to in a little bit because that's amazing, and I want one before I go to Omaha. Like it feels like y'all have that same type of, you know, team. Uh, speak to that a little bit. Like, has is that something that y'all feel? Is that something that y'all have consciously said? Okay, we're gonna make sure that we are close knit, or it just kind of has happened. I think a little bit of both. I think we were we were intentional about it, and you know, tried to make it happen. But uh, it was like 23 returners and 21 newcomers I think like between the freshmen and the transfers so with how, with that many new people I, I was a little bit worried and I think a lot of people were a little bit worried about like the you know the meshing of the team mm -hmm. but I think I've found that you know with that many new people it's just it doesn't matter like we're all just 
Tigers. He, yeah. It doesn't matter that he came from UCLA or, you know, whatever. Um, and we just, we kind of just realized that we need to make it happen, you know, whoever it is. Like, we're not all, mm-hmm. you know, best friends on the team, but we're all close. Right. And there's, you know, that, that mutual love, I would say, um, between everyone. And we definitely try to make that happen. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it comes back to the, the returners and uh, in the beginning of the fall, you know, Gavin Dugas, Cade, Dylan, Trey, Hayden, all those guys that, that you could tell they wanted to mess the group. And right. I mean, I'm super thankful for that coming in. I didn't know, I didn't know anyone on this team and, uh, those guys kind of taking all those guys under their wings and, and wanting it to be oriented around a really close grip group. That was really cool. And, you know, like, Two weeks in, I feel like I've known these guys for a really long yeah. time. So, yeah, it could have been like a lunch table scenario where all the transfers sit at one table and all the other guys are like, oh, we don't know you, whatever. So the people that are the transfer portal kids, or they all hang out together and you don't really get to be a part of the team. And it feels like it went the opposite way where, like, come sit over here, whatever you have to do. You've obviously been a leader that I don't think, obviously people expected it, but I don't think they expected it to do it the way that you're doing where you're, like a team guy, it's not authoritarian, it's yeah, not Air Force, and all that stuff. it's like that. fun stuff, and I don't think people knew that about you coming in. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something that has been, you know, that, that's the nature of the military, that's kind of the nature of the relationships that I've had coming in here, um, and, you know, I guess that's probably just my nature, I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I, heard, I heard both of y'all are like... Yeah. Unbelievable clubhouse guys, like funny and... Well, I mean, great. it's great when we have like we probably have like 10 or 15 unbelievable clubhouse yeah. guys and everybody else is a, you know, Malazzo's club. probably in that group. So yeah, yeah. Like, so good. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's awesome. Yeah. yeah the dog, we love being in the clubhouse where we pretty much. Race. What did y'all do through that long break? Like that long, the round long range. Like, did y'all, most of y'all stay? I know I saw some guys kind of leave, but did a lot of guys, did y'all all leave or did y'all like kind of stay? They left in plain clothes and nobody noticed. No, they, like I, snuck I through the crowd. Did y'all, everybody went home for a little bit. Is that how it works? Um, I went. I went home. I don't know what everybody else. What did. was your start day? So I yeah, I, I had to get out of there. The yeah, your starters are psychopaths on your start day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, we were just chilling. Y'all stayed. Yeah. Y'all stayed all the time. Oh, you actually yeah. stayed the whole yeah. time. Yeah, that's what I would have stayed. Would have, we would have had some. Do y'all still have a ping pong table on the players' lounge? No, I mean it's there, but nobody, nobody plays. plays. The spread wow. goes. Yeah. Wow. Not a ping we pong had, group. We had wow. monster ping pong games in there. Yeah, but they got a new table. We broke the other one. We just we just cut up. The I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Cut up and built Legos. Yeah, I got Legos. Legos. <laughs> Lego, Lego guy. Yeah, I was crushing Legos. Wait, time out, time out. you got Legos in the clubhouse. Yeah. What do you build? What do you do? What do you do? Before you got a no, look at look, he's like smiling about it too. He's, he's like, yeah. fell asleep in the in the dug in the locker room before oh, the regional game when we played. Happens. It matter, happens. I don't care. Nary didn't like Nary didn't like that much. No, he always thought he was hung over. And tiles, but I got I got a Lego and I did it in the training room. But I had to make sure coach didn't walk in because <laughs> I'm putting it together. And I was like, like I'm not getting the ball if I'm putting. This <laughs> Wait, how big was this thing? It was like, it was like a 520. No, no, no. Time out. What was the age group on it? We you know Legos come, with age, <laughs> Legos come with age groups. What was the age group? No, we don't need to talk about those. Like five years old. Which, you know, <laughs> it, was, it was a quick one. We didn't know how long the delay would be. Yeah. But I got it done. Uh, I don't think Coach saw, which was good. Because, you know. You should give it to him now. Yeah, this is really yeah. good. Is that thing making a trip to Omaha? Or is there no Yeah, I'm like, I get, get another one. one. You know, could be good mojo. <laughs> this is so great. But, uh, I love that. This man was building Legos <laughs> in the trainer room. I love that. <laughs> Oh, um, all right. We talked about. We, I mean, we can continue to talk about y'all, but I know that the team, since y'all are so close, obviously you talk about the offense, how good the offense is. Um, I think a lot of guys have done a lot of things this year that maybe not people outside of the team didn't expect, right? Like, I don't think anybody expected Beloso to hit three twenty with fourteen pumps. I don't think anybody expected Travinsky to come in there and hit four hundred with ten. I don't think anybody thought – everybody wrote off um, Thompson for no reason because he was banged up last year. They didn't think he was a good shortstop, which was stupid, but they wrote him off. How important has it been – Pearson didn't play this beginning of the year, and all of a sudden now he's one of the bigger guys in the, ba- the bottom of the lineup. I, think, I feel like he kind of solidifies the lineup. How awesome is it to see these guys stay the course, you know, continue to be good teammates, and be able to get rewarded for, for ha- and having good seasons? It's really cool. Like with with Hayden, with JP, with Jordan, and, and Belly for sure. Those guys, you know, they've been through their shit. You know, like no doubt. Hayden has a ton of injuries. 
you, you felt like you know he got pushed back a little. So you bit. have the best pimp job in the country. Yeah, it's so the best. So big league pimp. <laughs> Nobody in the big league does that. Nobody with, in the big league looks like him when he does with it. With the gold oaks. Yes. The so Jack. Parker the yeah. Jack. The the <laughs> bat drop with the hands up and like that's. Yeah. <laughs> And he, he, he tried to do it last game. He's like, I don't think I got this one. I don't think I got this one. And he'll, he'll tell me before, he's like, first homer, round the bases, we're going guns. <laughs> Second homer, we're going Manny Ramirez. <laughs> <laughs> so leak. And so he's like, as advertising. Yeah. He's a show as it comes. so sick. Yeah. So great great I mean, mustache. Awesome. Awesome clubhouse guy. Like, yeah. y- y- y'all don't even know. I, I, so I, I love that. Yeah, I, I mean, we don't even need it. We don't need it. No, it's good. it's yeah. in his own way, but like, I mean, he brought those shirts for everybody before the game yesterday. I love that for everybody. He's like, "Hey, who wants a Hendrabinsky shirt?" And it's like, what, "What's going on?" And everybody's like, "Yes, just go ahead, and give yeah. it to me right yeah. now." Yeah, I love that, and you're wearing it, and that's yeah. the great part about it. That's so great, so dope. Hey, for guys like Beloso, like you know his story, and I think the cool part about like the end of a year when you have a, like a really close team is you you start to have like a a magnification of like, hey, like this means a lot to these people right now. Watching him hit the homer in the third, how cool was that right there? It was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I mean, nobody deserves it more than him. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was like we, we've seen him work all year. We've seen him work every single day all year. Um, and I mean, we all, you know, from an outsider's point of view, they're not going to see it coming uh, necessarily because they don't, you know, they just see the yeah. product. They don't see mm-hmm. the, the process. And uh, we've seen the process, and we, we knew it was there the whole time. So, I mean. Yeah, no, nobody deserves it more than more yeah, than him. Him and him and Doogie, they just like mm-hmm. they bleed LSU, and it's so cool. And like, I mean, you, you just you love yeah. to see it for them. It's really cool. Doogie's a whole, Doogie's like a nine a nineteen nineties LSU, LSU tag. Like, way he's built and like how he plays it, and like I'm gonna get hit eight hundred times in a season. Like that's like he pipped getting hit by a ball. Yeah, <laughs> it's third one of the game. Yeah. <laughs> like. That's like old school. Like obviously we're from here, Louisiana. So like we grew up. Like that's old school. Like hey, in the nineties when like you know we're really big, because you know, it worked out really hard. Probably, probably not because of other stuff. But like <laughs> I'm gonna get hit, and then that's it's just kind of the way it was. Like super old school. Yeah. You know, player, which is awesome. Um, who's not old school, but who's very good. Obviously, is Dylan. Right. He's you know best position player in the country. I can't call him the best player because I feel like you know, both number one, one overall picks. I know you would say he's the best player. He's going to tell you you're the best player. That's great. That's how it should be. Um, Dylan gets his moment, right? He gets his last home game. He is the basically seals the game, hits the double, shows more emotion than I think that I've ever seen him show. And I showed a little bit last week on that homer, but this one, this double, um, you know, I got goosebumps. I kind of got the energy, like, just – He's a very quiet guy. So like, is that something that y'all see behind the scenes, like that emotion, that energy, or is that something that like, oh, holy shit, that one meant a lot. Yeah, that one meant a lot. We don't yeah. we don't see that very often. That's awesome. That's special. Yeah. And on the same note, on the other side of it, you got a curtain call, right? You came out. You had I think 101 pitches. You came out seven and two thirds. You probably could have kept going. You didn't need to keep going. And Jay did the right thing and came and got you and gave you your moment. Right, how special was that to be able to come here for a year, but then be able to to win over the fans? Not only because of the way you pitched, but how you you know you act, you reacted, you acted around, you embraced the the tradition. How cool was that for you, personally, to be able to experience that moment? Yeah, it was cool, and I I it, honestly like you know it's something I thought about, and, you know, um, like how cool it would be, yeah. and I didn't think it was going to be seven and two thirds, and you know a shutout. Uh, but like you know how cool it would be to experience something like that with 12,000 people you know clapping and all that uh, and in you know I, I knew that I was going to because they told me I was getting two hitters they told me I wasn't you know they they told me I was getting two hitters so that I wouldn't go the full inning like you know I get it yeah. it was nice to have the two Watch strikeouts yeah. <laughs> yeah I can see it you can see it I was watching him like yeah, he knows is he the last inning or that's his last batter because when you struck him out you're like Yes. Yeah, I and I so I like I knew it was coming, and uh-huh. I, you know, when it was happening, I didn't know how to react, but it was it was cool. Yeah, I just yeah, kind of put awesome. my head down it, and smiled. Yeah, that's all you can do. You know, you deserved it, man. It, one thing about LSU fans, they understand baseball, and like they understand moments like that. Um, and so, you you earn that moment, you deserve that moment. I'm glad you got that moment. Y'all got more moments though. More moments. More moments. Right? A lot more moments, right? Like that moment right there. Right, like you got moments that are gonna happen in Omaha. You have five games. Um, 
y'all have never experienced Omaha. You've never been. You've never been to Omaha, right? You said yeah. like the best for me, like one of the coolest experiences at first practice on the field, because you're gonna have twenty thousand people there watching your first practice, and it's like, damn, this is awesome, you know. And you're juiced up, and like you're probably gonna beg to hit BP because you know, <laughs> that's about to ask that. There's like, a lot. There's a lot of different things. Like you're gonna have that, and then you're gonna pay, you're gonna have a practice that's at a high school, where in your mind you're thinking you're gonna pull up, and it's you know it's just us, it's 35 of us here, and there's a line of people waiting to watch you play. You're like, what? What is plus going on? Plus 45 media members. And yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. Probably similar to Hoover. Yeah. Times two. Times yeah, two. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna have a lot. Right, I mean, more. it's gonna be yeah. like LSU just gets to follow. You, mm-hmm. You've seen. Y'all have experienced it all year. Like, what you get after a game as far as media coverage. Just in a regular SEC weekend or a home game, it's different than anywhere else you get. And then when you get to the postseason, all you saw at Hoover, you saw in the Supers. When you get to home wall, you're like, damn, okay, there's like 35 different media outlets from Louisiana just getting an interview at practice. You know what I mean? And, and so it's, I'm, I'm happy that y'all get to experience it. Y'all deserve this. Uh, That's what Jay came up for. That's what y'all came here for. Was to, was to, uh, you know, go to home wall and win national championship. Obviously, you're going to give me a political correct answer. I'm not going to ask who y'all would rather face um, between Southern Miss and Tennessee. But who would y'all rather face? No, don't ask that. <laughs> They're not going to ask that. Whoever, right? Just shut up their ass, whoever you're going to face. Um, I guess Riley Cooper's the only one that's been there, right, on the team? Riley, uh, Christian. Christian oh, yeah. Fish and, and then yeah. uh, freshman year, what is that? Maybe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then and then Bryce went, but he was he was hurt that year. So oh, okay. Have they have they told y'all about, like have they said anything about like damn when you get home you gotta do this this and this? What have they said like? Yeah, we room with Bryce, so we we have heard we both have heard of it. Nice. A lot. Anything that you can share with us? I don't know. I mean, it's it's a lot of like you know it's yeah. just it's so cool yeah, yeah, and stuff like that. Like, I've never been to a new stadium. What coach says is he says as cool as it looks, it's that times four. That's what he, he's told us a couple times. It is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what the new stadium was. I mean, I'm gonna, we're going to be there. We're going to be there for the first weekend. Um, so that will be the first time I've ever stepped foot into the, I guess what he said, Charles Schwab Field now. He's yeah. TD Ameritrade now. It's Charles Schwab Field. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to it. Uh, y'all leave on Wednesday? Yeah. And you'll have a send-off at 9 a.m. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That just came out. Apparently, Jay didn't know it either. And then Lloyd broke the news to Jay on – on the uh, on air on air and Jay was like, "Wait, what do we have at nine a.m.?" And just I figured Jay would have been on top you, of it. You it seems like he, well, I know, but now he knows. It wasn't gonna be a well, surprise. You don't think he was, was going to show up? With, for. Oh, we got a send off today. He's <laughs> just gonna show up and not know. I thought he would know. But, I mean, the man reads more than out of you know. He's always on top of the game, so I figured he would have known and be like, "All right, I have a like planned statement. Get everybody out to the box." He's like, "Oh shit, I don't, I didn't know we were doing that." Now we all know. So when you go to Alex Box and y'all leave at 9 a.m. on Wednesday, there's going to be about 5,000 people there. But thank Lloyd for telling you know breaking the news for you. Was yeah. it supposed yeah. to be a surprise? Was it like a surprise party? <laughs> I don't know. That's on the internet. Surprise. I mean, it's, a surprise, it's, right? it's on LSUsports.net. I mean, I'd imagine that people know. Now they Santa's do. not real either. Now they, now they do. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, don't do that. I'm I'm just saying. I mean, why would you, now, just because you got mad, don't ruin. I'm not mad. Yeah, you're mad. You, you ruin. What if it's what if a eight year old is watching this? Because they wanted to yeah, watch no, their. He eyes. thought he was real. Yeah, he oh, thought. Right. Look, you just broke his heart. Oh, I'll get you some Legos. Who's bringing for... Legos? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I let y'all go, I know y'all kept it off for a while. Y'all came to LSU, and you've probably heard stories and heard these types of things. Is there something that happened, or that through the course of your time here, that has been something that you didn't really expect to see or do? Obviously, football season is one thing. Y'all got to experience an Alabama LSU game where LSU won, which is awesome. But or like, did y'all? I've heard stories. Oh yeah, I heard. Yeah, y'all I've heard stories. Jay decided to give y'all a twenty-five inning game the next day, so that's a little tough. I, I heard on, someone wasn't in the stadium that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's that? I was pitching that. Day. <laughs> <laughs> Getting stormed the field and yeah. Are you there? Trying to be responsible. I, love to. <laughs> I, I figured a lot of people left. We stayed till halftime. Yeah, a lot of people left. Um, I'm gonna imagine y'all watch it together at the at a, someone's house or apartment. Yeah, yeah. I, I finished it in, in, in our apartment um, but was there other than that like was there something that like you know damn okay i wasn't expecting louisiana or lsu to be this way and if i mean it's what the they just not. got bro yeah i guess yes you're right that's one thing I, I seriously like when it comes to playing baseball at lsu i think that's the biggest recruiting pitch there is well jay did it in the middle of the game but not everyone gets to experience it right right and the one thing i kind of like i've always told people i was like 
I've, I've gotten the what's louder, the baseball, the football, what's crazy. And I'm like, I'll be honest with you, postseason baseball, because there's so much that's unexpected because people for, and, for you all to know, he played both. Mm -hmm. People yeah. live and die on every single pitch in postseason baseball. I was like, it's it's a completely different feel. And I understand, man, like there's 100,000 people in Tiger Stadium and it's so loud. It's always loud. I was like, postseason baseball in this place is something I wish every LSU baseball player gets a chance to come here and experience, and y'all did, and y'all obviously did it the right way because you're still playing. Well, y'all. So I mean, when you played football first, did like so you're playing Tiger Stadium and then you go to the season? Like, how did the environments? Did it feel kind of like doled down almost because like nothing really tops um, t Tiger Stadium? Well, I, I guess I'm getting the questions now. I like this. This is good. <laughs> no, this is good. This is good. This is, this is a conversation. No, it did. On no, my visit, I walked out there. You know, we go out on the field, and we we did that a couple of times. Really, sick. no, it's crazy. Yeah. It's I, I'll oh, say this yeah. in a weird way as a yeah. in a oh, weird man. way when you play football, it's so you go through it through practice. They turn everything, everything's blaring, bro. So like the noise becomes like very like you just get used to it. Like it's like it's not there. There's so many hand signals, and it's like the noise no longer really becomes kind of a thing. So it kind of becomes pretty normal, you know. Especially because like when you go out on the football field, pretty much it's it's loud pretty much the entire game. So that's that's what it is. And I was like, the only time you really get a chance to feel that is when you get to postseason baseball in this stadium. And y'all get a chance to, to do that and do it the right way. So. I say y'all walk on the field. I saw the video of you slinging the rock after your start, the football. Did you play football? You were you, no. you? No. No? No. You got and it? That was like the, the only spiral I threw that day. I was say, <laughs> oh, I was say, that knows came it. out nice. Guy I was like, is yeah. quarterback? <laughs> no. Slinging it. I like that. Did you play anything other than baseball? No, baseball guys? Baseball. Yeah. baseball guys. Nice. Were you always like six six or did you like I I was always was, tall. I yeah. was never like this tall. Yeah. I, I had a growth spurt, uh, maybe my sophomore year in high school. Yeah. And that's when you got to be six six. Yeah. Then... Still waiting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do have one real question for Still you. Waiting. For if you rewind to the regional were you surprised to go in after Ty Floyd? Did you know like the strategy going in if there was going to be a grain delay where it would be? Obviously, there was some thought to save you for the next game, but the way that Jay pitched it after Ty goes rain delay and then he gives you the rock, was it like, I want to close this thing out today, or were you just waiting to see what Navy was going to call? Because you saw how we used Riley Cooper yesterday. Like You don't know which one it's going to be. Were you surprised at all? Uh, no. I mean, Had for to one, I don't, I don't <laughs> No. I, uh... For one, I don't like. I don't care when I get the ball. I, I just want to pitch, you know. So, but when the weather delay happened, I just no one told me. But I was thinking to myself, if this is longer than maybe an hour, I'm I'm gonna go, and I, that's just what I thought. So I was like getting mentally prepared, and then Coach West told me probably an hour and a half before the game. So it wasn't like oh, like, yeah, yeah. So like I already knew, you know. I think the most impressive thing of that game is one. You gave Abel home and I was 90 miles an hour off the bat, which is, how the fuck does that go? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but the way you responded after, okay, you're going to hit the cheaper homer. I'm going to go and I'm going to punch your ticket. And you strike out 12 of the 15 outs, which is stupid. But, you know, and like it's, and then they give up the other one dated homer, which that. The ball was. Listen, to me. Pissed off. I know it's hit hard. <laughs> I know it's hit hard. Uh, I get it. I understand it. <laughs> Yeah, that's how you want to give him up, though. Huh? Like, <laughs> if you're gonna give him up, I guess you can give up the big. Like you rather give up the big one. I'd rather oh, give up that one than ninety one out. He was tripping me the whole next day. And he was like, "Look at that ball, man! Like, imagine if we went over the batter's eye." <laughs> <laughs> well, like, to that point, listen, I've seen a lot of games here. I have never. Not this is not to you. This is more of a. I've seen a lot of large men get in the box. Yeah, too. like people that have hit balls long ways. It's more of a thing talking about the baseball. Like, I know the ball was hit hard. I know it was windy. That guy should not hit a ball over the center field of the hitter's eye. Especially, like, they're just, oh, yeah. the balls are too juiced. Like, they're, it's too I juiced. Think you think they're wound, because, like, tight? Because, like, on uh, Trackman, I think an average major league fastball in terms of carry is, like, what's less than 18 inches. Every single guy at those 20 plus inches carry yeah. fastballs. Mm -hmm. They are. They're so they're tight. They're tighter. They're wound tighter, which makes them harder. Right, so I think they. I saw something the other day. I'm not gonna say where yeah. I saw it from. I saw don't a thing or two out. about this. Yeah, yeah. A, a study. Let's just say it was a study. They took three balls from 2000, uh, 2020. Three college baseballs. Three brand new college baseballs from 2020. 
three brand new college baseballs from 2023, three brand new Major League Baseballs from this year, right? 2023. Yeah. And... All fresh out of the pack. All fresh. Right you give me. You have the. I don't remember the numbers. No, you tell me. I mean. So I don't basically, really remember the exact numbers basically, either. the 2020 balls, the way it compressed and how hard it was, how hard it was, uh, was whatever number. The ball, the college baseball from 2023 was like 30 percent harder than that, and the big league ball was like 50 percent harder than that. So like, the gap between a major league baseball and the ball I use now is very very small. Plus, y'all use a metal bat. So like. Yeah, you know, it's just we got mention the blade. We got to figure that out. We got to figure that out <laughs> because I know you give up a bomb, a homer, but like that ball has no business going over the center field. Here's it pisses me off. The guy's a little guy. <laughs> He's just mad that he never did. That's exactly what he did. Bullshit. Did go to the scoreboard once with the other bats, not the new bats. The bats. Whatever, it happens. Um, but back to yeah, back to the point is the way you, you rebounded off that, you know, is was very impressive. And so I know a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of noise out here. A lot of people, you know, like to talk. They don't really know what's going on. And part of the narrative, and we never had that narrative, part of the narrative is, oh, you know, when things start going south, that's when, you know, you can't figure it out, right, or whatever. And you've proven that to be false, obviously, right? And so, you know, when something like that happens, Right when you give up a cheap homer or a big homer, um, how do you step off and say, "Okay, I'm gonna regroup and then I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna execute this next pitch"? Because both times that happened, the next guy struck out. You know, yeah. how do you how do you kind of reset yourself? Give a ton of credit to Coach Jay and Coach Wes, and I think at times, you know, where I would, I'd get beat or beat myself, I would think, "Okay, I gotta be, I gotta make some really good pitches now," you know, or whatever. But in reality, it's I'm going to attack him in the strike zone. I'm going to be confrontational. And I'm going to live with the result. And I think that's what helped me turn the page. And I also think, you know, with the pitch clock, I used to, you know, really step off, get a deliberate breath. Found a way to kind of, like, shorten that so I don't deal with any of the pitch clock bullshit. But, yeah. But, like, <laughs> that was, remember, like, before the year, I said that's probably going to be the biggest thing about the pitch clock is not being able to settle yourself down because you're yeah. going to get a ball or a strike call on you. got more time than you think a lot and then sometimes I start it slow and it's just think of the Legos good. from here on out that's <laughs> what I would Damn. do uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah I think like the reset has, has been what's able yeah. to turn the page Oregon well, State was not very aware of the pitch clock crowd got on oh for the regional that dude was he was having a moment out there well dude <laughs> you could see him actively <sighs> Oh well, God! Like you could feel twelve thousand strong. Well, and that's and that's like there's like magic of the box they say and like with the bullpen. So before the game, Kentucky last Kentucky game, like I don't know if y'all pay attention, but that guy warming up in the bullpen was getting worn out. Like he was, like this guy's not gonna make it to the mound. Like he's not gonna make. It. He's gonna quit because I felt like he was getting worn out. Like y'all notice that kind of stuff? We saw it. We <laughs> saw it, or I, I saw it. On, uh, I don't know if you saw it, but I saw it. You know, before the game. That, yeah, yeah, it was cool. Yeah, they were getting worn out. Well, dude, I uh, kept y'all a lot longer than I thought I was going to keep y'all. I appreciate y'all's time. I know that y'all got an off day today, right? You know, practicing again tomorrow and you know, yep. on Wednesday. Um, safe travels. Good luck this weekend. I appreciate y'all coming on the show. Uh, like I said, we're huge fans of y'all. Well, good luck this week. Let's not. Yeah, good luck this week. Good luck this week. Yeah. Two weeks. Two weeks. There good luck go. for these next two weeks. There you go. Five more wins. Uh, get y'all's get y'all's uh, year put on the on the thing. Go get some a ring because y'all earned it's it. Y'all too it. long. Yeah, please. It's been y'all set the standard. Y'all reset the standard. It's been since 2017 since LSU's been to Omaha. Last time they were there, they're in the finals. They lost to Florida. They haven't been in six years. That doesn't happen here, right? And y'all have reset the standard. So thank y'all for that. We appreciate that. It needs to, needed to happen. I feel like it's gonna be like that for you know years to come. And y'all are gonna be that stepping stone to help do it. So appreciate y'all. Good luck to y'all. Thanks for coming on. Um, and we'll be there watching y'all. So we're going to take an, a minute break. I mean, yeah. We're going to take a minute break, get them situated, and then we're going we're gonna to shut. I know we went over. for you to catch that ball between your legs? Were you terrified? Were you like, oh, God, this is coming right for the, yeah, the danger I zone? What, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Straight reflex right yeah. there. Just, yeah. No, thank God. Cool. Thank God I went the glove and not... <laughs> Wear a cup stuff. your next time. <laughs> the glove. Well, the the, the glove is still there. Oh, I see yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you get hit, though, I love it. You just shake it off. You don't ever. You don't yeah. ever like. That's good. That's what you're supposed to do. Um, all right, we're gonna take a minute break. Get them out of here, and then we'll sh we'll shut the show down. We're we'll watching mic'd up. We'll be back to you in one minute. Two, one. 
Dozy Place is located on 3723 Government Street. Everybody knows about their world famous steaks and their hot tamales, but what you may not know is that they're open for lunch every day from 11 to 2. Great people, great environment. Their lunch menu is fire. What's the best thing on the menu? If you haven't tried it yet, you need to try the burger. Unbelievable, best burger in town. Best burger in town. If you're looking for lunch, 11 to 2, at Doze Eat Place. Again, they're located on 30. Oh, you have the sticker on your head. Well, that's going to be brought to you by EFCO. There you go. Every Who's EFCO? EFCO Development. There we go. EFCO Development. EFCO <laughs> Development is a civil construction company based out of Lafayette, Louisiana. Uh, they they or they specialize in math was bye bye to me long ago, so huh? I never had a chance to work there. Like you math, what you know, engineering and all of that such. So, you know, the smarter people. That well, this is so civil engineering. Let me explain to you how this works. The so civil engineering is more about the earthwork and the ground, and you prep the land before you build vertically. And I don't know how much uh, mathematics that they are actually doing. Maybe Jay can tell in us. that in that spot. So I don't think the math excuse to you is a, is a thing, but FCO Development, our friends, that's why you have the sticker on your forehead. I, I'm sure your friend, Tyler Leday, uh, appreciates that. I have Tyler's number. I will announce that number later on whenever we give them another. But before we go into our break, I want to give a shout out to, like I said, we, we talk about us getting new partners, new sponsorships all the, all the time. We have a new sponsor, and you've probably seen them on the top left corner in the little uh, little spinner logo fco solutions our friends on at fco they're out of lafayette they're a civil construction company they specialize in new multi-family construction right if you don't know what civil engineering is i mean civil construction is it's okay probably a lot of people don't understand it they basically get the land ready to be built vertically right I'm giving you a little bit of a construction lesson here i don't know much Crash about course. it i've learned it i've learned it on the go right they specialize in site drainage, site utilities, earthworks, site cleaning, house pads, ponds, demo work, and hurricane cleanup. So they do anything that involves dirt, basically, or the earth. And a lot of that gets done before, it has to be done before you are building whatever development you are trying to build. So our friends at EFCO have been fans of the show. They are really, really good people. They are down there in Lafayette. If you know anybody from Lafayette, you do know me. Jay Mitch is from New Iberia. I'll consider that Lafayette. 337 area code. There you go. 337, 337 area code. They are unbelievable people. Um, they do a very, very, very good job. And they are committed to growing and being the best at what they do. So I just want to give a shout out to our friends at EFCO. Um, I know that they listen. Appreciate you guys. We are going to be great partnerships. Like Heather, maybe you're gonna have are you gonna have a Heineken Silver for the game, maybe? I kinda want one now. You gonna shotgun another one? You want another? I don't know if you should shotgun because we saw how that went last time you I don't know. I, I feel like you gotta redeem yourself. I, I you know. Know. you can have a drink, I don't think you should shotgun it. The way okay, it went, I'll, I'll, I'll I enjoy should, this I think one. you should chug it, but maybe not shotgun it. The maybe way it went have, last time, it's Yeah, I could do I mean I can sit. do anything. I know. Alright, fuck it. Alright, go ahead. Go ahead. Go for it. There. Oh, that's much better. One, two. Open three, open it up a little bit, you know what I mean? Five, six. Seven, eight, okay, nine. Okay, so ten, now it's starting to drip. 11, now you're struggling a little bit. Twelve. It's pretty good. Thirteen. It's not seconds. bad. I'll give not you a bad. Ah. Twelve and a half seconds. Right. How was it? Was Ooh, it good? Delicious. You can't do that with a regular one. With a regular one, right? You can only do that <laughs> with the silver. With the silver, why? Because the silver's lighter. It's got lighter. ninety-five calories. Mm. It's pretty crisp. That's not even. That wasn't even cold. I know you don't really. You don't necessarily need a cold beer. That was room temp. The, the, the I respect how quickly you turned around and gave me a full sentence. That was quick. Oh, like yeah. That. No Officer, doubt. I'm fine. Like you've been, looking, you've been, around, you've been around before. straight line, kid. Yeah. Huh? You've been around before, but it was, it's just breakfast. It's a very good beer. <laughs> it's it a is. very light beer. It's something that you can. Easy to drink. Easy to drink. Easy to easy pour. Easy to pour, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's something that, you know, I think it should be in the rotation at, at tailgates, especially with LSU baseball coming up. We'll get into some of the LSU baseball conversation. Welcome back to Miked Up. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I feel so bad for you. Good thing you can go back and look at it because it's on the internet. And things that stay on the internet always stay on the internet. They do. Um, especially on Twitter. Especially on Twitter. Those. Really digging myself a hole over here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can't get another job. Uh, that's tough. Those, uh, the, those two interviews because we got you know, we're, you know, blessed to have both of those guys in here at the same time. Interviews brought to you by our newest sponsor. 
uh seems like it's going to be it's a very budding um relationship with our newest sponsor and our newest partner and that is land rover peretti of baton rouge hey when you when you partner with people you want to partner with winners right and people winners. That do it right and people that look out for you peretti land rover is the, the model of doing that and it's been a great relationship we've had with them so far i've actually had a very long relationship with them and uh yeah man we want to give our uh, give our give our newest but one of our best sponsors some, some love right no doubt the ticker that you see on the show that lloyd does a really good job of continually put up there is sponsored by land rover uh peretti and also those inter- that interview today sponsored by land and rover peretti. there may be some other things in the works in the future maybe looking at you know, if you want to look ahead to next year what they did with walk on it's a lot of conversation yeah. maybe a, yeah, a lot show. of stuff happening yeah. Yeah, a lot of yeah. happening. Yeah. a lot of yeah. stuff happening a lot of stuff cooking appreciate couldn't do that without all of you watching and listening and supporting us we appreciate you coming up to us at games too, telling us how much you enjoy the show. Um, we work hard on it, believe it or not. We really do try hard. Uh, we are a bunch of idiots that we we just come out here and we just try to figure it out. But we feel like we'll figure it out. You know, we, we put together something good for y'all. And we want to do it for y'all because we love LSU. We love we love talking sports. And as we continue to grow, we would like to kind of expand and kind of grow our reach. So we couldn't do that without you. So we appreciate that. Uh, we normally have a ton of segments, um, but. I'm gonna go and just give our one segment, which I feel like is, uh, we could probably, it's a community. It's a show segment. Yeah, show segment, it's a curtain call. And curtain call is brought to you by our friends down at Assured Partners. For any, all your insurance needs, please call us down at Assured Partners. Frankie Harris. What's that number? At Assured Partners. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, the number is our cell phone numbers, but I'm not gonna give that over uh, there. Um, but look, you can look it up. Look up the office number. It's on, it's in the, uh, it's on the internet and just call us. The office of uh, Frankie Harris, Shirt Partners, our office is in Lafayette. Um, we are equipped to write any of your insurance needs. 337, what? Go for it. 337 266 2150. There you go. Ask for Mikey or Frankie or Lloyd. can help you with anything, with anything you need. Um, all right. Our curtain call is, uh, I think it's community to uh, what do y'all want it to be? The LSU fans base? You want whole, it to be the weekend? The whole weekend. Because this whole weekend of Super Regional has been a while since they've hosted one here. Um, there's a lot of rain delays. There's a lot of movements. There's a lot. Of, there's a lot of delays. But <clears throat> hat tip the, to the people for sticking yes, it out. Hat tip to the people. Hat tip to all the fans. Uh, hat tip to the crew that got the field ready. Make you know everybody that was involved in making this weekend possible. Um, and all the fans that are going to be in Omaha. Looking forward to seeing you all out there. Chilla shots record is ours. No doubt. All right, we are going to be back live in studio on Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. That'll be our last show of the week in studio. We'll have another one uh, at some point in Omaha. We will keep you updated via social media. And, uh, again, if you like our show and you like the content that you saw today, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, it really helps us out. If you don't like, if you can't watch us or you don't like watching us and you like to listen to us, which I don't see why you would not like to watch us, but if you just like to listen to us, we're anywhere you get your podcasts, and uh yeah enjoy the rest of your monday we went a little overtime but we had a reason to do that and um we will see you again on wednesday thank you for the support yep peace peace